that plant's bugging you. No, it's it not. He's my friend. I wish I had something hanging up. Like, shit, I should have put this banner up there or something. For the background? Yeah. I mean, I can always edit something in in the back. You could? Yeah. yeah. I can do that. Did you see my other podcast where I had a bunch of, like, hot, like, stud... St- yeah. Like big muscular men in the back. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Do that. Do that. Just, just something well, stupid and goofy like that. Just because it's like distracting. Okay. Perfect. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Meme Works podcast. This is our first in-person podcast. Yay! <laughs> it's scuffed as hell, but you know what? We wouldn't have it any other way. Love it. Love to see it. Absolutely. Yep. How's everyone doing today? I'm great. You just had some ribs that Dylan made. Human ribs? No, that would oh. not be oh, good. That would have been magical. Chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, I was trying to figure out questions to write down for you, but I feel like I hardly know you, so we're kind of we're kind of just going off the cuff a little bit. No worries. <laughs> well, do y'all want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, um, I'm Brooke, you know. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. My name is Bianca. I'm Bianca. And that's it. My name is Jared. I'm 19. And I've never learned how to read. <laughs> <laughs> I almost wanted to open this like a Mr. Beast like video. It's like, today we're going to have a podcast. And the first person to get up is going to get their fingers shoved off. Or oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Hell no. Could you imagine an evil Mr. Beast? That'd be so funny. That's like, <laughs> that'd be like Saw. Like Mr. Beast. Plus saw equals that person. He he could do it. He's got the money for it. Honestly. Yeah, he could make a whole little short movie. I don't I wanna know this man's like business scheme. Like how the hell do you make this much money? I've he, always wondered that too. He's younger than all of us. He is. And that's amazing. He's younger than all of us? He's yeah. like t- twenty three or something. Well I'm twenty two. Okay, I'm twenty one. Well, Alright. So he's just younger enough. than you. Okay, close enough. But I don't know. I've seen him in podcast and he says he he spends a bunch of money on his videos, but he also makes more off of it. And it's like, how did you? I don't know how he does it. He went like two weeks without eating any food. Yeah, I saw that video. I was like, oh my god, I could not. But he just not me. posted on Twitter like his revenue from his newest video. Like it cost him three million to make, but he was transparent with people and like it's only made like one million so far or something like that or hundred thousand yeah. yeah well he's he's okay he's oh he's, so. he's he's doing fine <laughs> he would just gave away a tesla like he was driving a tesla down the road and just traded with someone like in the uh, at a stop sign yeah he, he was talking <laughs> about like, the prizes he gives away <coughs> um like the island for example he gave away the island and they were like well do you want it or do you want me to just sell it and give you the money because it's like the taxes on that have got to be insane yeah like i don't know i'm good just give me the money the (laughs) thing is though is what i've always wondered is when people give away like really expensive cars like yeah like they got it for free but like insurance (laughs) yeah (laughs) don't you you still get cucked in a way oh yeah i don't know yeah i mean just just give me the money like that's all i need i don't i don't need all the extra shit that reminds me though there was this video about that show um where they would help families and who in need and like they would demolish their house and send them on a trip to disney world i forgot what it's called but like what okay okay i need some context what that abc show like where they demolished people's houses sent them on a trip to disney world and they got a whole new house oh okay i thought they they just destroyed the house yeah destroyed the house but oh no you still get to go to disney world but your house is no longer it's not like extreme home makeover but Basically, they would give these families a new home, but it would be, they would, like, go bankrupt three years later. Like, you think it'd be so great, but... You might want to live just a little closer. Oh, yeah, um, but, you know, they would be bankrupt, like, three years later and have to, you know, and the rooms they would make, it it wasn't really that great. Like, someone had a room, they made a room of, full of du- stuff made out of duct tape. Like, what kid is going to grow into that over the years? That's no. Extreme home makeover, more like extreme life fuck over. Like, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Literally. Oh my god. I couldn't. Yeah, sad. They were trying to do a good thing, but it just fucked families over at the end of the day. Sue. They should sue. Yeah, I don't think they can. Maybe they have a sign contract. Who knows? But, you know, that show's not going anymore because I knew what they were doing. Mm. And it's like, how do you, like, sign up for something like that? You know, like, 
you know, they, they've got to know something's going to happen in their house, right? I mean, I would well, assume... people would nominate them, like their neighbors or a family friend. Oh, yeah, this person's house? Get rid of it. Like, they need a new home, you know, because they do all this and aren't able to sustain themselves, but, yeah. So. <clears throat> well, damn. <laughs> Not yeehaw. Not not yeehaw in the slightest. All right, well, I have a question for you, Brooke. Yep. How, how did you get into art and tattooing and all of that jazz? Like, how did you know, like, yes, this is my calling? Well, in seventh grade, I had a friend who would draw My Little Ponies in, in math class, and she was just really into art. And I also had a friend named Mariah, who was also an artist, too but way before I got serious into it, they kind of inspired me. Like, I was really bored one day, and I was like, well, I'm going to draw My Little Pony. Or I think it was Elsa. I drew Elsa from Frozen okay. when it first came out. And, you know, it wasn't great or anything, but I just felt something inside me that, it, a big dopamine rush, you know, like, I like this. This is great. This is fun, so. Did you, did you ever take any, like, lessons or or anything like that or you just kind no. of drew and just really you just figured it out all from scratch yeah you know i would practice especially in school like you can just draw you know and listen to the teacher at the same time so school really helped a lot with that but i would go on youtube and look at tutorials like mark mark crilly he was a really cool guy who helped me um be able to draw like better more you know like realism stuff yeah, because my, um, my best friend is an artist, too, but I feel like you can have natural talent, but I also feel like there's got to be, like, techniques to do certain things. Yeah, it's like a muscle, honestly, because, you know, I didn't really take it seriously until seventh grade, and, you know, people can draw, but when you take it seriously, like, you can take it to a whole next whole new level, for sure. I can't, I can't even color it within the lines, so yeah. I was like, you know, they didn't do the same for me. I would doodle in, like, my, uh, my notebook, but that was about it. Yeah, it is crazy. People will ask me, like, did you draw your life? And, you know, when I was younger, like, in elementary school, I remember drawing this little flash sheet um, of little designs, and I would have my dad look at them, and I would draw draw them on him, like, which ones he wanted. And that memory is really cool, just thinking about where I am today, because I didn't think I was going to be a tattoo artist. And a good one. Uh, oh, yeah. thank you. Honestly. You. No, like, you're... I'm, I'm not even, like, kissing ass or anything. You're, you're fucking talented, and it, it kind of pisses me off a little bit. <laughs> I appreciate that, but, you know, like, it's hard because us artists are really hard on ourselves, and we compare ourselves to other people, and, you know, it's a crazy well, that, industry, but... That's, like, everybody. everybody yeah, that's art. everybody. Yeah. Whether it's music or drawing or whatever, like, so you're always going to compare yourself to someone. Yeah, I'm sure everyone feels that way. The main thing that I've learned about making art of any kind is just, you just gotta have fun with it. That's all that really matters. Literally, it's, it's, it's not a competition. It's not, and it's, when you think of it that way, it's just so much more freeing, and the pressure is lifted off of you. Absolutely. And yeah, I saw a quote the other day. <clears throat> like my very first song that I ever learned how to produce, like making music, was absolutely fucking awful. Like as far as like production goes and like musicality or whatever and it's my most popular song and i don't know why but it's like I, I went into it not trying to like be good at it i just went into it having fun and i guess it showed people like it so i'm like fuck it sure which one was that spaghetti yeah spaghetti and meatballs that shit is <laughs> have so you heard good. that song you no. got you gotta I've send it heard the link or something because that song is dope. I'll have to send you. It's, it's not great. It's a meme, but you know, people like it, so I'm like, shit, okay, cool. That's all that matters, honestly. So if somebody, somebody will has, like, there's so many people in the world, and somebody will at least like your stuff. No matter if it was, like, making art or tattoos or music, there's always somebody that's going to appreciate it, look up to it, get inspired by it. And absolutely, yeah. and I, I think that surprises me because my song is a dubstep song about someone dragging their balls across their spaghetti. So okay. <laughs> there, there, there's a niche for everybody, apparently. Oh my gosh, have you heard of those AIs that are making music? Oh yeah, I've seen some. I've heard this SpongeBob rap, and I have been playing it nonstop, and it's, it's so fucking funny, and <laughs> it's 
AI, but it sounds just like SpongeBob. So it's SpongeBob rapping? Yeah. <laughs> what song? It I'm not sure what if there's like not a title, it's just like a thirty second song on TikTok. Oh, it's like, so it's like an original song that an AI wrote. Yeah. Like somebody went into like an AI prompt and said, like, make me a rap song about SpongeBob like dissing path or uh Plankton. And I gotta find this website. That's, oh I, my I god! I've heard some of these I'll before. have to send you the video, but the song slaps. Like he's talking about like, cause Plankton's wife, Karen. He talks about like, doing the nasty with Karen. And <laughs> oh it's funny. I love it, and I showed Josiah earlier today, and I played it like four or five times today. If, if you ever find the website that people are using to make these, yes. let me know because I need I, to find this. I'll have to like read the comments and ask like where are you guys doing this and then I'll send it to you. AI is getting crazy. It, it is. is. Like, it is. It's kind of scary. It's kind of cool. But it's like, cool but it's scary. Right. Because the world is fake. Every time, everything that we all know is, is just fake. It's a lie. And AIs, AIs are going to like take over a lot of jobs. Like fast food, the, gone. It's already, it's, already get, it's already getting there. Before I left Duncan, like they were talking about how there was going to be in the works of like instead of like somebody being an order taker, they're just going to have like a computer do it. A whole robot. The they're whole in- robot, just like saying it's prompt, like hey, thanks for stopping. What can I get for you? It's going to be a freaking Siri doing like it. Like that one sushi place at the Mall of America. Yes. Like, that a robot. Exactly. I've seen that store. I haven't been in there. Is it? Really, just a robot? Is it work? Well, I haven't been in there either, but like that's the whole thing is that there's a robot. And I don't like bring that. Bring your food. No. And I I want an actual person making me my food. Yeah. It's just something about that just does not sit well with me. No. There, there is a McDonald's that is literally um there. There's no workers. It's all robotic, and you just type what you want on a screen, and it'll deliver it to you on the like mm-hmm. on a conveyor belt or something like that. I don't remember, but it's like. I don't know, that's just weird to me. There's a Taco Bell, too. Yeah, this is the, yeah. isn't there one in, like, Brooklyn Center, yeah. Brooklyn Park, that has, like, it's like a two-story? Taco Bell, the Taco Palace. I've never no. been to that one. I hear it's bougie We as gotta hell, go. We gotta, yeah, we, go. we gotta, we gotta do that. And just record our experience and how we feel. Yeah. that's weird. I, I've heard you go to the drive through and they, like, drop your food down from the second floor, like, Oh my god. Like, that's so extra. For, it like, is, though. For what reason? <laughs> that tax money could have been used better, maybe. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> no Honestly. lies detected. All right, let's see. I got some other questions in here. Have you guys ever had a near death experience? And if so, what happened? Whoever wants to go first. Near death experience? Oh, or- shit. Oh my gosh. I feel like I've had so many. Or like that's, I thought I did. That's kind of it. It's that I thought that's I like scary. could have died. Or like I don't know because like my anxiety is like so bad that I think of like all different ways like what could have happened. Like me and Jose went out to um, breakfast on Monday, and we were emerging off of an uh, to get on an exit, and there was a truck in front of us that like went in front of us from the exit side and it was a semi with logs on it and i was like bro oh. have you not seen final oh, destination man. right and he was like what are you talking about and i was like look and there's just these big logs and i'm like i could have died but like you know what i mean that's not actually like a near-death experience but i always like think about stuff like that well do you have one where it's like oh shit i literally could have almost died one story comes to mind i was probably like eight or nine and i was like roller skating in the garage because we had just like cement flooring and my dad had like all of his like tools um out because he just got done like gutting a deer so he had like a saw and other stuff that he needed and i was ro- i was roller skating just around and i almost fell but we had this rope connected to the to the um ceiling of the garage that my dad was hanging the deer from and i like slipped backwards and i grabbed it to like hold me up because i didn't want to fall and i like stood up and i looked behind me and it was like that like saw thing oh no and that would have been exactly like where i would have fell on and I always think about that, like, to this day, I'm like, wow, I really could have died, like, at eight or nine years old if I wouldn't have, like, thought so fast to grab <coughs> onto that. Because I was falling backwards. I wasn't, like, falling to the side or in front. Like, I remember, the like, one of my wheels just slipping out underneath me. 
I would have landed right on that saw yeah, that's if it wasn't scary. for that stupid rope. And I like cried so hard to my dad. And he's like, well, what happened? And I told him the story and he's like, but did you die? And I'm like, but did you die? Yeah, the class. Every time, but did you die? I'm like, no, but it scared me. He's like, well, nothing happened. So you don't have to worry about it, but. Except trauma. Right. Literally, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. I, and I have, I don't think I've been roller, rollerblading ever since. I'm so scared. <laughs> So, no, <laughs> it's a no for Roller me. Rollerblading in itself is just scary. Yeah. Honestly, because I feel like you're in control, but you're not. Like, you can stop, but if you, like, fumble your stop, you'll fall forward. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially if you're going, like, downhill. It's like, good luck. Yeah. I, like, stop. and, like, one time I went snowmobiling with my mom, and I was in the back, and she was in the front, and we were just going on, like, this little joy ride, and she flipped us, and my leg was caught. Um, like, I was basically straddling, like, still straddling the, the snowmobile, but upside down. And the handle was pushed on my neck, like, the side of my neck. And it was, it wasn't, like, letting me, like, lift up. So I have a face full of snow with a handlebar on my neck. And I can't, like, get up. So I'm, like, suffocating in snow. I'm, like, can't breathe, can't get up. I, I don't know what my mom was doing. Right. I'm, like, get this thing off of me. And so we picked, she got it up and I was just like hyperventilating. I was so scared. I was like, I was basically drowning in snow. Like I can't breathe with the, with the and I couldn't get up because the handlebar was on my neck. And then you couldn't like lift it or was it just, you know, I was young too. I was probably oh. like, like first grade. Okay. I yeah. was really, I was young. And so I didn't have like the strength to just like push it off of me or to get it off of me. I was trying to like move my like head sideways to like at least push the snow out of my face so I can breathe because I was just, every time I was breathing I was just breathing snow and your mom my, like just did was just she, probably watching me probably watching me struggle I don't know what she was, was doing because I couldn't I, she, I couldn't she was just her. like oh shit I gotta get this one <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no we she got it off of me I was crying I was scared and then <laughs> I just walked back to the cabin from then. I, I refused to get on it, and I've never been snowmobiling since. Have you, that, that reminds me of something. You ever heard of those stories where, like, uh, a parent will, like, get in a bad car accident, like, flip their car with their child in it, and they'll get up out of the car and, like, be able to lift up an entire vehicle to rescue their kid because of their adrenaline rushing so hard? Like, isn't that just insane? I've heard That's about crazy. that. That's yeah. crazy. That's like a, at least two or three thousand pound vehicle, and... Oh, yeah. I mean, if I had a kid and I got us into an accident, I would do whatever it took for me to get that kid out. Right. It's just, it's crazy what the human body is capable of when True. you really need to do something. When you're, like, in a flight or fight, like, mode. Yeah, I get that. I have two near-death experiences. I'm going to let you do yours, but my first one is, like, five seconds long, but... Okay. Okay. Um... Well, <laughs> you'll let her go first but you're gonna go first okay <laughs> so i'm gonna forget otherwise um apparently my mom said that when i was born i had the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck oh. and almost choked myself out i was like apparently i knew i was like hey get me out of here i didn't sign up for this right like you you did something in the that's womb. so kinky <laughs> you did well, something in the womb for sure i do have a i do have a choke kink but you know that's a story for another day <laughs> that's another question down the list i think what is this look he's just looking at me Give me. Yeah, Give me come hi. say hi. Come say hi to the pod. Yeah. <laughs> He's so shy. That just reminded me of like, like you go you over to like a friend's house and they have like a toddler or something. Oh and God. And like, Sleep over. Sleep over. <laughs> yeah. I remember going over to a friend's house and they would have like little kids and like I would like we would all like just play together like they would have like not kids but, like siblings and they'd be like Bianca sleep over. Over. I'm like, <laughs> that's all they would say. No. <laughs> okay, Brooke, your turn. Your near death experience. Yeah, I mean, I have a few, and I think you were there when I experienced one, but I didn't say shit. Wait, um, what? Okay, now. Okay. And now I'm interested. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. so we're just. Oh, well, I remind me. I don't remember. Well, I don't remember so of a walnut. You, she had a near death experience, and you didn't do shit about it. This is why I want to hear about it because. Oh my God, what kind I of friend you are you? There. Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay, Brooke, I'm interested. I, I, okay, yeah. So I mean, I have one that's short though, but I was at my aunt's and uncle's house. They had a pool, you know, kid goes in the pool, and then they I start drowning or whatever. But then my uncle, you know, swooped in and saved me. So that was scary. How uncles do? Yeah, I know. Bless him. He reminds me of that to, to this day. 
Remember when I saved you from that pool? (laughs) Yeah. All right. But anyways, so, I mean, do you remember going to that, like, abandoned place with you and me? I think it was this one guy named Josh, but then I think you, me, and Andrew went. Um, where? where? Um, I think it, I'd like to think it was in, like, Lionel Lakes, but it's not too far from here. But it was, it looked like a little town, and there was that restaurant, remember, when Andrew was trying to, like, break it? A chair, he used a chair to try to break the plexiglass. Because it was all abandoned stuff. Was this at, um, Minnehaha Falls? It was like... It was not at Minnehaha Falls, no. It was like off this road. There was some abandoned... Are you sure it was me? I really hope it was me because now I feel fucking awful. Well, no, I mean, it's not... I don't feel awful. (laughs) I don't... I kind of don't remember too because it's so faint, but I know... But I really... No, it was... You were there, I think. Or it was Andrew and this guy named Josh. But I think I went there twice. I think you came with me and me and Andrew because I think I remember you saying like, okay, well, don't be too loud. We don't want the cops coming. Fuck, I'm trying to remember. I've gone to, like urban vaccine so many times. Yes. Yeah. I was also probably fucked up, so maybe. Yeah. That, that's part of it. That but is the part. That is part of it because <laughs> I was fucked up too. I mean, off, you know, smoking too much weed, but we were going. I think we were in that, the restaurant that you know the abandoned restaurant and. I was just so high. I was walking and exploring. Um, no, I I think you were like inviting me to this. This is when you went into like, like it was like a like a sewer almost, or like a some other caves or what? I can't remember. No, it wasn't a cave because it was like a little abandoned town, it, Cause like I, a little strip mall. Because I it does not sound familiar to me. Are you sure it was me? Yeah, I know you came with us once. Okay, well, continue. Maybe it'll wreck my, my brain. Yeah, well... Sorry, guys. I'm an awful fucking friend, apparently, so... <laughs> no, you are. I vouch for that. <laughs> they, you know, they had a vet veterinarian place there, too, and there's all this, all these books and stuff, and I think... Um, well, anyway, so... Yeah, we were in the restaurant, and I was walking away from, you know, you guys, and there was this big hole, you know, circular hole... And when I was, it was kind of dim in there, so I was just wandering, and I was like, That'd be, to me it looked like a mirror. Like, I thought it was a mirror. So I was going over there, I was like, I'm going to step on that. I think that'd be cool. But I got, before, like, I had, like, one foot off of it, off, like, into the hole, and before I realized it was an actual hole and not a mirror. And it was pretty deep down. I knew if I would have stepped in there, I would have, like, died. <laughs> I would have died or broken something. Holy shit. Like, it, yeah, it, I was... Do you was, have, like, videos or, like, pictures of this place? Because I... I Yeah. I, I swear I have, like, whenever I forget something, it's, like, buried in the back of my brain, and then something will unlock it, because otherwise yeah. I won't remember. Because I this doesn't sound familiar, like, at all to me. I think I took a picture of the actual thing I thought was a, a mirror. I don't know why I thought it was a mirror, but... Was it... Maybe, like, a reflection of, like, water or something? No, it just looked so clean cut, like, I thought it was a mirror, but, uh, it probably would have been in 2020 or 2021. I gotta go way back. That might also be why I don't remember, I, From 20 to 2020 to 2023, there's been a lot of drugs. Yeah. A lot. My my life has been a, a blur. <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes. Like people will like add me on Snapchat or hit me up on Instagram. They'll be like, "Hey, remember me?" And I'm like, "Dude, I don't even remember like what I did last week." Same. Like, what makes you? Th- I'm like, what, what what happened? Oh, we went <coughs> to high school together. Oh, pff, I don't even remember what high school I went to. And it's like I feel so bad because it's like it's not that I don't give a fuck. It's that like my brain just. Right. I think I have so much trauma that my brain just. It tries to just forget things, or doesn't want to. I don't know how to explain it. Awesome, I have a question. No. What's What's your sign? Oh God. What's your sign? What's your sign? I want you to guess. Okay. I don't know. Let's, let's I don't. Look, I don't feel like I don't. I feel like I don't know you well enough to like make an educated guess. What's my vibe? What's my vibe tell you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not the first person to say that. Um, I'm unbelievably vibe? straight, but <laughs> um, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, let me think. I don't know because I don't know you enough. Well, I would say maybe 
Okay. I don't know. When's, When's your birthday? birthday? <laughs> no. <laughs> you just you just one in twelve. You just gotta guess. I don't care if you're Okay, wrong. three guesses. Two. Two. Three. Sagittarius? That's one of my signs, but it's not my main one. Okay, so not that. You only get two. I get three. That's um, cheating, but okay. No, three guesses. My three, three, three. Where is it? Right here. Always three. Okay, so not Sag. Virgo? There it is. <laughs> oh my god. How did you guess that? Because, I don't know. Like I said, I don't really know you well enough to like make an educated guess, but like, I guess... Yeah, from the vibe, from how many times I've seen your butt on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> what does that have to do with my side? That just seems like a very big, like, Virgo thing to do. Like, I I would if I didn't have, like, my family on Facebook. I would so have my ass out there. I mean, I have it on Visco because <laughs> it's Visco. Nobody cares. Just, my visco will be linked in the description below. Virgo equals showing ass on the internet. I want to fact check. <laughs> oh, ask any Virgo, like, hey, have you ever put that out on there? And they'll, all of them will say yes. But like, Most people are like, oh, I'm very analytical. But the thing observant. is, the thing is, is you put it out there, like, like I said, not knowing you, just making an educated guess. I don't think you put it out there because of confident reasons but because of like i'm silly i'm fun i like to have fun like this is funny and people like it exactly no no of course <laughs> of course i'm not saying anything of that i'm just saying like you like if i put my ass out on any social media platform it would be like ha huh, um my ass is hot like i look good but the reason why you did it i got the vibe off of was because you're just having <laughs> yeah, he's fun a virgo. he's a virgo <laughs> it's fine he's a virgo so yeah. I just think men need to be sluttier. Not my man. I found the picture. No, well, not like I don't want to say like sleeping around or anything, but like be more comfortable in their sexuality and their body. True. But they're just like oh, I'm gonna be big old macho man. Oh, I would figure near my butt. No, I would never allow that. That's gay. Even if a woman's doing it. I've that. asked Josiah so many times if I could peg him, and I he won't peg. let me. He, he won't, won't let me know. He won't. He's, it's not that he's scared. It's just like in the beginning of our relationship, he'd express to like what, like we put boundaries and I feel like everybody's like, when you're getting into a relationship, any kind of relationship, whether that's friends, family, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, that you, I think it's healthy for one another to place boundaries. So we did and I told him like what I'm okay with, what I'm not okay with sexual wise and anything other than sexual wise and so did he. And, like, I was pretty open to a lot. And I'm like, okay, let me put my finger in your butt. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, bet. And I'm like, okay. Oh, so he allowed it? Yeah, he allowed it. Okay. Okay, but not a strap on? Like, do you not understand how fucking amazing that's going to feel? I just feel like that. I mean, as compared to. I know. I know. Obviously, you don't. Grab like, like this, this fucking dinosaur dick. I know, <laughs> I know. But also, like, I don't think that he doesn't want to because of his sexuality. I think that he's just not comfortable with it. Yeah. Which is fair. That's fair. Like, I like okay, yeah, put a you can put a butt plug in me, whatever, but if it's like ten inches, no. Like I'm not okay with that. Well, that, that, that could hurt. That could very much hurt. And I don't yeah, so I just don't I don't think it's because of his sexuality wise or if he's like confident, but I just think that he's just not comfortable with it. Maybe start with like a prostate massager. They're smaller and they're easier. Yeah, no people like train. But <laughs> also I think I've given him a lot of like PTSD from like him just walking around and I'll just like Oh, God. Uh, girlfriends do that. You know about that? Don't, Girls yeah. do that. And I don't know what it is. I don't know why we do it. I, I think it's just funny. <laughs> like, we just do it just to annoy them. Or I'll twist Dylan's nipple. I twist his nipple, too. <laughs> Not Dylan's, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, he'd be, like, making, like, dinner or something. Yep. And it's like, like boom. Yep, nice. anytime. In the morning. Oh, hell no. When he's <laughs> When he's smoking. When he's playing video games. If he's just walking in front of me. And anytime, I'll just be like up there i had an ex that would like put her finger in my belly button randomly and i wanted to like oh start throwing hands because i don't know what it is which is so uncomfortable really wow that is so unprofessional oh did you find it yeah i found like some pictures so it was march 21st 2021 there was some graffiti cock and balls yeah 
wonder some of these red tags that you're seeing. Isn't that you? Josh. Oh. No, no, that was just. This does not look familiar. I don't really. Think... Wait, Lily. Lily Dale. Oh, well. There's some pictures. Ooh. <laughs> is that the mirror? No, well, this is some more shit inside there. That's. Oh, that was a cool Budweiser thing I found. This is what I thought was like a mirror. I guess it wasn't circular, but I thought it was a mirror. This is what I thought was a mirror. Oh God. I think you were high because I don't think I was, I was this. I don't. I don't think I was. Maybe here. I was too high. This does not look there. like like there was like a spark of memory. But no, but I could have sworn you came like. I think we tried going there once, you, me, and Andrew, and it was like blocked off. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna call Cap, but then again, my my memory's not great, so I'm. Just yeah. Oh, and this was in the veterinarian's office. There was a picture of this cat's tooth and stuff. You should take in that. I wanted to, but I was like, fuck it. And then, I don't know, it was inside the thing. Yeah, that was Andrew. There's me. It's because it looks like the back room. <laughs> it does. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that looks like the back room. Well, if you find a video with my voice in it, then I am then you eternally there, sorry. Then you were there, but I don't have any um, evidence of your voice in there. Because I wasn't there, probably. Well, I, I remember, I swear you were there that one time when we tried to use a freaking chair to break into... I feel like I remember that. Like, that sounds epic. But you do have a really bad memory. I do, but... Well, you know, I was high, so... I don't... I don't want to ruin our friendship on a podcast, all right? Let's no. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, I get, I get, I forget a lot of things too. <clears throat> all right, well, do y'all want to know how I almost died? Besides yeah. the, the choking kink at the age of zero. Yeah, let's let's, let's hear it. it. So it better beat that. that. This story better beat that. Right. Story. It is it is such a strange occurrence. Um, so I think me and my friend like took acid and we were walking down like uh, in St. Paul at like three in the morning. What was this? Was this? Recent this was a few years ago. Oh. Um, <coughs> I'm pretty sure this was before I met you. Okay. Um, we were walking across the Wabasha Bridge, and you know how they have like dividers to, this, to split up like incoming and oncoming traffic, whatever. So we're walking across the bridge. <laughs> Hello. Nice. You wanna you wanna share that with the? I think I see a pimple right there. <laughs> pimple. You want me to pop it? Yeah, come here. Let me get it. You want to pop it on camera? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Pimple Popper Bianca. Dr. Pop my milky pop. <laughs> I'm going to just redact that. Milky pus. <laughs> that should be your new name. Dr. Milky, <laughs> milky pus. That sounds like a drink. It, it could be. Pop my milky pus. I mean, you could technically drink that after you pop it. I'm just going to that. Can I get a, 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 a doctor, doctor milky pus. pus? Can I get a milky pus? Yeah. Ooh, I wouldn't want that. On the rocks. <laughs> Shaken, <laughs> not stirred. Oh god. Are you joining us or what? Do you want to say something to the pod? Josiah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not picking up your voice. Have you had a near death experience, Dylan? Have you ever had a near death experience? Oh, okay, he puts his hands on his hips like after he just sharded. Okay, well, not that one. Just Josiah, that one. do you have any near death experience that you want to share? Yeah. You want to well, say Dylan it? has had a near death experience, guys. He's just. Well, Josiah, Josiah has a near death experience that actually happened quite recently. Yeah, but we're not going to share this unless they share it. That's not I'll fair. Share. That's true. No, that's I'll not fair. Share. They got to do it. If you're going to be on the podcast. What? Heat. No, not the fireworks. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> we we were we were laying in bed. We were laying in bed, and he was kind of like awake, but kind of still like sleepy-ish. Like he was not consciously up, but he was, you know, you know that's kind of state you're in. You're like, oh, I don't know where I am, mm -hmm. but you know. That's what he was in. And I, I woke up before him, and I turned over. And I didn't want to wake him up, because I know he had like a long day at work before, the, the day before. So I covered him up with the blanket, 
and I put the blanket over his head and I farted so loud, so bad. I, what is it called? I Dutch ovened him and he Everyone, this died. Everyone, this is Dylan, by the way. Well, half of Dylan. Half Mo of him. Kind of part of his ass, but. But anyways, continue. <laughs> I, he basically almost died because I Dutch ovened him and it was stinking gross. That's what? Dylan tries to do that. Come here. Everyone's gonna think that I don't have a boyfriend. I'm just looking at random people. He did my boyfriend. Uh, everybody, I would like to introduce Josiah. This is Josiah. This is my boyfriend. That's so naughty. I'm gonna have to cut that. It's gonna rate R in here. Yep. <laughs> Don't cut that. <laughs> okay, but your near death experience. Yes, yeah, okay. Ahead. So, so you're my friend, friend saved my, my fucking life, life, by the way. If I, if he wasn't there, um, anyways. So we're, we're trying to cross the bridge, right? And there, there's like a little barricade this high. It's like, okay, we're just gonna put our foot over it and just get to the other side, right? Well, we're fucked up, you know, tripping balls on acid and we like, we're gonna run to jump over it. And he, he jumps and has one foot on the barricade and then I'm right behind him, and he pushes me off. I'm like, what the hell? He's like, dude, look. And we look over the barricade, and it was like an illusion. There's like a six-foot gap and a hundred-foot drop into the Mississippi River. Oh, my God. And I was just, we, we had no idea it was there, because like from the angle, you couldn't see that. And it was dark? Yeah. So we were like, okay, sure. We'll and you were on us. Well, it's... We still would have done it sober, but we, <laughs> we didn't know that there was. You had to like look at yeah. it from like this view. You can't tell that there's a drop there. So you had a running start. He did. And he, I don't know how the hell he didn't drop in. That man's reflexes were incredible. But best case scenario, I would have hurt myself immediately and be able to hopefully swim out of the the river. Cold. Yeah, because the, the currents in there are crazy. Like they will pull you under. True. So. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario, uh, I'm fish food. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who was your friend? Uh, his name is Matthew. Shout out Matthew. Yeah, shout out Matthew. Shout out to Matthew. I met this dude. Gigi. I met this dude once crawling out of a cave, <laughs> and never didn't talk to him after that. I was like, okay, hey, what's up? That's cool. That's a cave. Sweet. And I come back to that same cave just out of happenstance, and I see him crawling out of it again. I was like, okay, it's so clearly there's a reason we need we keep meeting like this. So. We, uh, we ended up becoming like best friends and like he showed me about the caves and stuff like that and it was awesome. We're not friends anymore unfortunately. I don't know why. He never told me. Aww. But that's, that's, a, that's a long story for another day. He just kind of stopped hitting me up and blocked me on everything. So, Lovely. Yeah. I have no idea why. I, but, like, if you could have like talked to me about this, we could have worked something out maybe. But, okay. People be right. like that. Literally, I had a friend in high school. Like, he was my friend and middle school and then in ninth grade and then I left for 10th grade but I came back 11th grade and I saw him you know I was like hey what's up and then I tried to give him a hug but he didn't he would say anything to me like like he never knew me and it hurt man I was like okay fuck you did he like have like the hots for you and you make you turn him down no, or something no it wasn't anything like that no we were just friends what the fuck it, it's crazy up in here. Okay, but what I hate... Okay, I'm sorry. But I hate that. And I don't use hate often. Because it's such a strong feeling. But I hate how when a female and a male are friends and uh, outsiders automatically think that there's something going on. Literally. Well, it happened a lot in school. <clears throat> it's because it, it happens a lot. I'm not saying it's always the case, but... True, but like, I was on the phone with my grandma and I told her about how me and Jose went to go out for breakfast because he just got a new job <coughs> offer and he was telling me about, um, like, being at home was just a little toxic at the moment and yeah. he wanted to get out and his girlfriend was sick. And so he's like, do you want to go get breakfast? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I had the day off. Sure. So him and I went out to breakfast and I was telling my grandma about where we went. We went to Stillwater and I told my grandma about it and she's like, what do you think Josiah thinks about that? And I'm like, about what? Right. About, like, about what? You going out to breakfast with another man. I'm like, uh... Oh, God, God forbid. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he cares. Like, I don't, I... Right, He didn't, and he didn't. I got home and I was like, what do you think? And he's like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, like, I know, and I knew that he wouldn't. 
but I let him know before I left, but he can't, like, always be on his phone at work, because it's, like, works with, like, machinery, and, like, you can't, you always have to, like, be focused on what you're doing, otherwise, like, bad stuff can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's not always on his phone, he's only on his phone, like, during break, and it was, like, in the middle of the morning, so... He doesn't get a break in the morning. He just gets it for lunch. So I just texted him. I was like, hey, I'm going out to breakfast with Jose. I'll see you when I, like, hope they'll be home by the time you're home. Whatever. And that was that. But, like, I just don't like how people think that, like, a guy and a girl can't be friends. And you know me. And you know Jose. Yeah. No, I, mean, I wouldn't. Never. <laughs> I can see if she thought, like, if it was a random guy you just met, but, if, you know, you're friends with Jose and you know him like that, like, and, or where and his like, homies. And if you have, like, trust in your relationship, you shouldn't have to, like, worry about that anyways. Yeah. I told my grandma, I told her, I said, me and Josiah are, like, <coughs> in a really healthy relationship and then we communicate. I have never been in a relationship where communication was 100% as much as mine and his is. And, like, we talk about everything and he knows where I stand and... I know where he stands, so I don't think there wasn't anything to worry about, but absolutely, I just don't, I don't agree with how people think, like, oh, guys and girls can't be friends. Like, I, I, I was raised by, like, a single father. Yeah, you know, so me, I was too, like, I, I, I grew up as literally one of the guys. Yeah. I have more guys in my family than I do girls, so I get along better with guys than I do girls. And it, and it happens a lot with, like, the older generation, because they think that, oh, well, you know, with another guy, or you're cheating, yeah, or something exactly. like that. Yeah. It's, just, it's so dumb. That's I mean, how they grew up. And honestly, I wouldn't even care if that was the case, because I'm poly, so if someone's like, hey, I'm going to go fuck this guy, or girl, or whatever, I'm like, okay, cool, have fun, be safe. Oh, God. You know? <gasps> Can yeah, I have a straw? Man. We do have Audio a straw. listeners, if you can't see what's going on, but this man has a bucket we of have- Kool-Aid. Not not a jar, not a glass, not but a, a cup, bucket. A bucket, an ice cream bucket of Kool Aid. Why? <laughs> nice. Very nice. Well, like I don't want any right now. Thank no. you. Though. <laughs> and it's not cold. That's. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. Oh my God. Perfect. <laughs> Just stands there for a whole hour. <laughs> yeah. Now it's cold. Jeez. Why is it a bucket? Yeah, why don't you use the pitcher? Oh. This makes sense. This man's probably high off his rocker right now. Just mm, bucket network. <laughs> it does work. Alright, what else do I have for questions? Craziest experience on drugs. <laughs> We, we never done a single bad drug on here ever. Don't. I'm just kidding. I don't give a fuck at this point. Go ahead. What, who wants to start? Um, I guess I will. Get it out the way. Yeah, so, I mean, the first time I did acid, but also the first time I got high off weed. <coughs> um. $5 a glass. <laughs> what? Mm. He said it's $5 a glass Sandra, and he gave me a, sh- a, a shot. Wow. Exquisite. Carry on. So it's like wine t- tasting. Like, mm, it has a hint of mm, put some wine mahogany in oak barrel in it. Ooh, actually, it does. <laughs> <laughs> in the little Cartman glass. Anyways, what, so what happened? Yeah, I mean, I was with Dylan and I got some acid and I took it at his, at his place and. Oh wait, and you said this is your first time ever taking it? Yeah. Okay. You know, and you know, I wasn't feeling anything for like 30 minutes, so Dylan was like, I'll take a rip off the bomb. Thank you. No, oh, I'm okay, thank you. I so got my Gatorade. He gives you both glasses and I get a shot Fit glass. Gatorade. It's citrus berry. Some hmm? Some Bud Light? That's also a conversation we could have. That's an interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you but, not drink? Hmm? Do you not drink? Not at all. Oh. <laughs> okay. Brooke, Brooke, carry on with your acid yes. story. Oh, yeah. So I took a rip off the bong, and I was like, oh, it was so much. You know, when you take a big rip off a bong, and then you start coughing. <coughs> oh, yeah, I started coughing like crazy for a minute there, and then I, um, you know, got to it, but I was just feeling so weird. I think. Wait, was, was this before or after the acid kicked in? This was, um... I mean, before the acid kicked in, but when I took the rip off the bong, everything kicked in. 
Yeah, it it heightens it and yeah. speeds it up. It, yep, for sure. So I was like, everything was spinning, you know, and I really didn't think I was real at that point. I thought it was a simulation or something. And, you know, Dylan was there, my trip buddy, and, you know, basically I just, I would get up really close to him, and he thought I was going to, like, um, rip his eyes out or something, but I was just up close to him, up close to him, like, we were this far apart, and I was just staring into his eyes and looking at his face, and it was just so beautiful, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, his eyes are so beautiful, and. Well, so it was it was a good experience. You weren't just like. Well, it it was bad at first because I started crying and I was gonna go outside. I was trying to like get away, see if I was real, and then well, Dylan, I got I calmed down after a little bit, but Dylan says I <laughs> I, I got a little too out of hand, you know. At some point, he made a lot of mac and cheese, and I ate all that mac and cheese and threw it up <laughs> the next day. I didn't go to school. I just told my dad I threw up. You know, he doesn't even. About the rest. So I said that that meme where it's like the skinny little alien walking into a dark room, and it's like, "Mom, I threw up." Mom, I threw up. <laughs> yeah, it was bad, and I was it was it was really scary though at first because I never done it, and I felt like I was I was gone, like I'm never gonna come back from this feeling that, like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It can you definitely know. do that. And yeah, I mean, I don't do acid a lot anymore because it's not that great for me. I, I you know just get. It's also not good to mix with other drugs. It's no. it's it's good enough on its own. You mix it with something, it gets pretty bad pretty quickly. Yeah, thankfully, I mean, I don't have any stories where nothing like too crazy happened. Like I was in deep trouble, but it's more like you know having a bad trip. Or my coworker made these weed brownies and she gave me one, and I ate the whole thing. There was 600 milligrams in there. Holy I had never shit. had that much at once, and I just felt like death. I could not. I was high, like, for two days straight, and I was just throwing up. Um, Wait, for two days straight? Yeah, I was basically high for two days straight. The next day, I was still kind of high. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I was just throwing up. I couldn't eat. Oh, my God, it was so bad. I couldn't even enjoy the high because I could barely keep my eyes open. And yeah, Dylan came home and found me throwing up. And I was like, you Larry, what are you doing? <laughs> Bro, I had that brownie. It was too much. That's part of the reason I don't smoke or, like, do any kind of marijuana, except for like in very small dosages, because it's like you you never know what you're gonna get. Sometimes, yeah. like every high is different too, you know. Yep. What about you? What about how, what is your experience? Mine. Yeah. Well, mine too was with acid. She's an old friend of mine, little <laughs> Lucy over here. Mine's gonna be on that too, so I guess we're all in the same boat. Well, I mean, because it's such like a. It's such a different kind of drug. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like, I too don't smoke a whole lot of weed. For me, I feel like no matter what strain it is, no matter what... I'm so sorry I forgot to do this. Oh. (laughs) It's fine. It's all right. Like I said, it's scuffed. But anyways, continue. No matter what kind of, like, what strain it is, where you got it from, I always just get... I just get so tired. And I just fall asleep. I cannot stay up. Even if I take one hit, well, I take Zoloft. So um, whatever kind of, like, uh, drugs or alcohol, it's going to times it by, like, three. So if I take one hit, it's going to... Wait, a weed or acid? Anything. Oh, okay. If, like, if I... Because I take Zoloft for, like, it's an antidepressant. Mm-hmm. And um, if I take, like, if I go out and I get, like, a drink because of the effects my um med will be on that drink it'll seem like i had three drinks so if i i, I, I take i take sertraline i think that's like off brand so i, I that's that very well so if i take one hit of uh, of one sorry one hit of like a bong it'll be like three or four hits mm-hmm. i just always end up getting so tired so it's just like what's the point of being high if i'm gonna fall asleep right exactly but um me and acid we go way back and I love her so much. <laughs> I love her. I used to do it like every other weekend when we were in quarantine because it was like there was nothing else better to do. Right. But you didn't want to do it too often because then that's like killing a lot of brain cells. But anyways, so this was probably like my 20th time doing it. And I was I thought I was a pro. So I was like, yeah, let's do like five 
five tabs. Five? Well, what my first, first time, time, I took four. That's crazy. And I was, when you're in it, you're in it. And you just gotta ride the wave. Right. So, this was like my 20th time doing it. And I was with my ex and his brother. And they thought that it would be a really good <coughs> idea to, like, buy whippets. Oh, no, no. And I'm like, oh, what's that? And, like, they're like, here, try it. And whippets and acid, they go so well together. It's amazing. Because acid, like, fucks up with your vision. But the whippets fuck up with, like, your audio. It's crazy. So I'm just, you know, I'm, like, three hours into the trip. And I'm just whip doing the whippet. And, like, you feel, like, warm and fuzzy. It's like even doing a whippet when you're sober, you just feel like you're, like, laying on a cloud. Like, you feel like you're floating. So, and then whip it on acid. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. I love it. I've only done whippets once, and they're. It's amazing. Well, only last Guys, we're not condoning drug use here. If you're going to do drugs, be safe at least. and Be safe. And be in a comfortable environment with yes, people you definitely, trust. Definitely. Definitely. And just don't, don't do whippets. Whippets is. It's so bad. For it's, you. I've it's, never done it. How, what is the it? The high lasts so, like, it's like a couple minutes. You know that meta. Like that. It's like oxygen. an inhaling. <laughs> thing that they give you like to put you to sleep yeah that it comes in like a canister like a little container oh. and you just crank it into a like a whipped cream like you know when they make whipped cream at like starbucks mm -hmm. it's that and you just you soak it in and you just it get a, like a two second high and it literally deletes your brain cells it, 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 it does yeah. not delete your brain cells it's, Yes, it does. It's so bad. For I've you. only done whippets once, but I know everything about it. I've googled it. <laughs> okay. okay Google. Go Google does not. Google lies. Okay. 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 Anyways, so I was just doing like my little one, and I just, I was just so happy. And then my ex was sitting next to me, but he was doing a back to back, which is you crank it, you inhale it, you keep it in there while you're cranking another one and then you exhale and then you're inhaling the other one so you're getting like double fucked and like his face was so like scary and he was just like and i look at him after he like got that out of his system because it only lasts like five to ten seconds that's it and i look at him and he's like what and i go where do you go when you do that because i do why my one and i'm happy yeah but when you go do your two you look crazy like where do you go like he wasn't there yeah exactly i was and i, I asked him like where'd you go and he goes you want to find out and i said fuck yeah <laughs> so i did it yeah and i thought i died because i did the back to back i remember we were watching wreck it ralph on like a little tv and all of a sudden, I can just see, like, the pixels just, like, moving. Like, if I'm moving my head, it just, like, you know how you see trails and stuff? But it was, like, smaller than that. It was, like, D -d 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 -d. it was weird. Like, the movie was, like, coming apart. It was so weird. And, like, I threw my head back onto the pillow. And I have, like, my, my ex right here. His brother was standing or, like, sitting on the couch over here. And I just threw my head back on a bed. And I just looked up, and I'm, like... I'm dying. And they were freaking out. They were like, Bianca, Bianca, are you okay? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, I'm dead. But then I came back and I was like, oh, but I was freaking out. Like, I started crying when I came. Like, I literally thought I died because that sh the shit that I saw, I don't know what I saw, but it was weird. But then I learned, like, oh, like, I didn't know, like, when you do it like that, it, like, messes up times two with like your audio and stuff so it was so just wait, really you weird hear anything? You know? no i couldn't hear nothing that's scary so is it the kind of thing where you do it but it only lasts five seconds but for you it feels like five minutes or yeah, yeah minutes like it lasted longer yeah than what it was supposed to so it was just really weird but then when i like tried it again i wasn't as scared as the first time because it i'm like right like, my acid self was like you're dying this is it have fun but like my sober self was like you're you look like a crackhead right now <laughs> like so i thought i died but i didn't and yeah that's that story don't do back-to-backs they're crazy don't don't mix drugs with acid that's what i've learned yeah molly and acid is awesome don't that's an exception 
I wouldn't do like Molly and alcohol or <clears throat> sorry acid and alcohol. I wouldn't do that. But acid and coke. Oh. It's awesome. Acid See, and that's coke. because mixing uppers and downers has really bad results. And that's kind of what my story was. Um so I bought some acid for my friend, and I bought like 10 tabs, and I took three of them. First time, fucking awesome. I had a great time. Everything was going peachy. Peachy. Mm-hmm. And then the second time, I took three more again, but I decided to drink beforehand. Why? Oh. I don't know. But the first time I took it, it took like an hour and a half, two hours to kick in, which is usually pretty normal. And then the second time I took it, it kicked in in about 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, this is weird. That shouldn't be happening. And it kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Like it was, ke- you kept peaking. Right. It's like, and it wouldn't stop. I was like, okay, um, first, the, I, at first, like, oh, I feel great. And I was like, okay, this is getting kind of weird and uncomfortable. Yeah. My mom recorded me. What? Yeah, like, well, I didn't realize this because I was so far gone. Apparently, I kept begging her to, like, let me watch the TV show that she was watching. I, like, I can't remember what the fuck it was called. Um, I was, like, running around, turning on lights. Um, I brought, like, food outside on a plate, and then somehow I lost the food. And, <laughs> like, most of this is a blurb. This is just what I was told. My brother said that I was, like, repeating myself and freaking out so bad. He's like, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. So he called the cops. What? Which, first of all, <laughs> no, no, no. Not what you're do doing that. with psychedelics. No, no the that's... cops should be, like, the last thing on your fucking like, I, mind. I'm already freaking the fuck out. And then... Cops. The officers come. They were actually really nice, and I, w- and I was actually very genuinely surprised by that, and I didn't get, like, in trouble. Um, apparently, I hugged one of the officers because I was like, I need a hug so bad right now. And I was sitting down, and I was like, just drinking water, and I guess when I went outside, uh, backtrack a little bit, when I went outside and I had the food, I tripped over my own foot, and I had, like, a baseball size like, swelling on my ankle like it oh no i sprained the shit out of it so they took me to the hospital which also is not a great place to be when you're, when you're balls no and acid. never and when i was like arriving there i was in like a headspace that i i thought i was dead i thought i was in like purgatory or some kind of like dream state because everything felt so surreal and just I don't even know how to put it in the words because it was just so absolutely crazy. So I thought I was dead, and they put me in this, like, um, uh, this little, like, I guess, I don't want to call it a waiting room, but, like, I was in, like, this little room where you, like, you have, like, a bed and stuff, and I was like, oh, well, since I'm dead, I guess I'm going to try to figure out <laughs> if I'm actually dead, and I'm going to try to escape this place. Oh. And the reason it really freaked me out is because every time I left my room, there was this one lady who would come up to me. And she would always say, Austin, what are you doing? We can't leave your room. And it sounded like an NPC. Really? But she said it, I, I did it multiple times, and she said the same thing the same way every time. Which <laughs> oh, that was only fun. more reinforced the fact that, like, oh, this is not real. This, right. None of this is happening. She did not help. And my mind was in a place where I was like, I, I, that sounded like a fucking lunatic explaining this, but I was like talking to all of my friends in my head. And they were out there. All the voices were, like, trying to, like, reach at the same time. This is a horrible fucking scary experience, by the way. Like, I don't recommend anybody ever do this. But then I was like, okay, I got to escape this place because this is not real. I was like, I felt like I was in a bad dream where if I did something good, I guess, like, I could escape it. So I got to a point where I was like, all right, this lady keeps seeing me leave my room. Well, how can I sneak by? So I went on the floor and started crawling Damn, bro. Because <laughs> there was, like, there was, like, counter, and there was, like, a window you could, like, see through. And I was, like, I'm doing this. I'm just trying to get back to, like, the exit door. And then some other nurse comes out. And she's, like, Austin, what, what are you doing? You can't be crawling on the ground. <laughs> what? Like, what a... Treat me like a five-year-old, which, by the way, is... It, that's fair, because that's I was... Fair, because you're acting like one, so, yeah. yeah. So are you telling me you spent your whole acid trip at a hospital? Mm-hmm. A line of health. And I got out at 8 in the morning... And they, before that, they were, like, giving me, like, IVs and drugs and stuff Did like they this. knew that you were on acid? Yeah. I don't know, actually. That's a great question. I, I know the officers did, but I don't know. I'm assuming they... Did you they, tell the officers? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, they were in my house, and um, 
they were just asking me questions and I took a lot of acid and my mom, everyone, everyone was freaking out. They thought that I was, I got mentally insane, which, fair. I mean, sounds, sounds about right. Did your mom know? Oh yeah, no, I told her. I was, I was like. I was so then you told the officers and they're like, yeah, we're going to bring you to the hospital? Oh, I think it was because of my foot. Oh, and, and foot. And probably oh, that's right. because of that too. Yeah. And if I was like coherent enough, I would have been like, no, I'm fine. I want to just go lay down and, you know, relax, but. A hospital is the worst place no. to ever have a, an acid trip, especially when you don't feel like anything's real. Right, the wall. Could you, like, ask for food? Did you ask for food? <sighs> no, you didn't. I didn't even think about that. Oh, my God. I almost peed in the corner of my room because I was like, you know what? This is not real, so fuck so it. So, yeah, not? I'm going to pee anywhere I want. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> when I, like, planned out my acid trips, like, I... Like, like when, when I'm okay, so I trip on acid. I'm like, okay, like what am I hungry for? So the next time I'll like bring the food, so that I'll have snacks. There is no good snack to have on acid. There's they all taste nasty. Like I had so like I had popcorn. It was gross. I had like chocolate. It was gross. I had a burger. It was gross. Like I'm like this is this is not. Like, there's no good snack to have. No, it does when, when you're uh, yes. Yeah. So I'm like, so when you're tripping from like eight to twelve hours, you can't eat nothing. Oh, oh my god, pooping on acid? <laughs> Not a fucking thing. Not a real thing. You can't. You can't. I haven't. I, mean, I, I have. Oh my god. I don't. I don't know how. Cause I get so. I don't know. I've gotten so scared, and I try, and I push, and I'm like, fuck it. I guess I'll just be constipated for, like, the next two days, because I can't do it now, so I, I won't be able to for the next two days. It's crazy. If you got to tell me your secrets on how to freaking poop on acid, because I can't figure it out. It won't come out. I, I just be shitting in general, so that's probably part of it. <laughs> yeah, true. I guess. I get it. But but anyways, to summarize that story, I got out of the hospital. At, I went in at like 3 a.m., got out at like 8 a.m. And then when I saw like the, the light of day, I was like, I'm, I'm, I am alive. Things are, things are good. Call did you fall asleep at the hospital? I, I did it for like, I think a half hour to an hour. Um, Trying to fall asleep on acid is like a stimulation because it's not fucking real. So it's hard. There are some people I've met that always fall asleep on acid. I think Dylan told me he fell asleep when he took acid. Really? Yeah, he was, like, telling me I think Josiah said Jose did that, too. He, like, fell asleep and then woke up and he was, like, tripping. tripping. Oh, yeah, like, maybe they fall asleep after they take it. No, I can't. Like, I have to wait, like, the whole yeah. until the come down. And and then even yeah. then, I'm still, like, I can't for Right, you're wired for, like, 12 hours at least. Yeah. I had a friend who took it once for the first time ever and never again. This man almost ran into, like, oncoming traffic he was like oh, fighting he, air like he said obama and trump were having like a wrestling match and like the suit was like so unhinged i could not i was like dude you never this is yeah. not for you yeah no. <laughs> but well, let's wait hold on i got oh, go ahead i found another story i thought of another story i took molly and have you guys both been to the maplewood mall yes i think so yeah yeah so i was on molly that's, that's really at the maplewood rats, mall by the way if you know that movie really mall rats no, I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, the, the old Maplewood Mall before they changed it, but anyways. That's cool. But yeah, I was on Molly, and then, like, I was with a group of acquaintances, um, and one of the guys worked there, and we were all hanging out after he got done with work at the mall, and we were all going to go on the carousel. Well, I had to do something real quick. Me and my other friend were going to meet up with him over there, and he said, oh, yeah, he's at the carousel. I'm at the carousel. When we got there, he was already on it. And he looked at me and was like, come on. But <coughs> it was already moving. And I was like, okay. So I tried hopping the fence of the carousel while it was moving. But, you know, because I thought, you know, I was on Molly and I thought I was invincible. I can do it. It'd be easy. It's not going too fast. But, you know, the lady was like, what the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck off. And it was so embarrassing. Cause yeah, I was like, why would that guy say that shit? Like, I know he was probably joking, but in my mind, like, you said, okay, come on. I don't know. I thought it was okay to do, but yeah, it was so embarrassing. Me, and my other friend left after that because it was just, I don't know, the whole mob. I was like, the whole mob probably knows by now. Everyone's looking at me. That was not fun, man. I was fucking, fuck that. 
So my ADHD brain kind of zoned up for a second. Why did you Why did you hop the fence? Because her friend was on the carousel, and he was like, "Come on!" Oh. So her Molly brain was like, yeah. oh, "Okay, I'm gonna okay, hop the fence and just jump on the yeah, carousel while it's well. going around." <laughs> I can do that. Like, yeah. Dude, drugs make you feel like you're invincible. Honestly, I but like I will never drive off of acid. <clears throat> I will never go swimming off of acid. Swimming? Oh, oh my gosh. I got I just as fun. I took I me and my friend faced a a joint together and we went to her pool in her apartment and I was like, Do you think I could breathe underwater? <laughs> That's just marijuana. So I don't know what it would be like for acid Bianca to go into a freaking pool. Like I would be a, like I would convince myself that I'm an actual mermaid. Yeah. Oh, no. Why, why did you think you could breathe in the water? I mean, I, I know, know you say, like, you'd feel invincible, but that... No, I literally... We were just sitting. We were just floating, you know, bellies up in the water. It was just her and I. Nobody else was you there. You underwater. And I was like, Jasper, do you... And she's like, yeah, Bianca. And I'm like, do you think I could breathe underwater? And she's like, don't. And I'm like, don't. <laughs> I wanted to try, but I didn't. Darn. Oh, my gosh. We watched the whole, like... Johnny Depp and Amber Heard thing high as balls and we were just laughing the entire time it was so funny that, that sounds like quite a thing to watch on that. <laughs> literally <laughs> I've only had to drive home once on acid and it was against my will against your will? well I guess the high lasted longer than I thought it was and I was with a friend and I had, had I picked him up I had to drive him home Oh shit! we made it but it was so fucking scary do not do not do that it is so bad. I know. I don't know if this might be a touchy topic or not, but... I mean, we've already talked about quite a few I things. I know. But, <laughs> but it, might be, it might be personal. But I had to drive home drunk, and it was forced. And I had to. I had no other choice. What do you mean it was forced? Right. So I was underaged, and it was me and my ex, and we went to Wisconsin to go visit my family. And then... Yes, the legal age you can is younger in in Wisconsin, but as long as you're with a parent. Yeah, Wisconsin's crazy like that. Yeah, I've but I wasn't with a parent, so even if I told whatever, so even if I told the officer like I was drinking, I would have gotten something. I was yeah. really scared. Well, me and my ex drove to the bar because my aunt and I were in a pool tournament, and I was her partner. And I had a couple drinks. The bartenders in Wisconsin they don't care. They don't care. So like, okay, whatever. I had my aunt, my uncle, same last name. You know, check my ID. I think I was like eight, nineteen or twenty at the time. And then me and my aunt get obliviatedly drunk. Like so like I'm falling over, I'm peeing every five minutes. Like when your pee is clear, that's how you know you're fucked up. Yeah, dude. So Like we're Becky, we gotta go. Literally. <laughs> so we were driving home and we get pulled over. Because my ex was driving, like, five miles over the speeding limit. And by the way, that will kill your drunk so fast. Was oh, he drunk, too? No, no, he wasn't drunk. But me and my aunt were. So I'm in the front, he was driving, my aunt's in the back. And, oh my god, when I saw those lights, I sobered the fuck up. Yeah, but I was still, I was still, like, drunk. But, like, like I was still, like, me, like, he had to step out of the car. And the officer asked him to, co- like, to go to the cop car. And me and Jen were just, like, laughing our asses off. <laughs> well, it seems to be the officer problem. Yeah. <laughs> How high are you? No, it's high. How are you? <laughs> yeah. So, the, but the officer, he shines his lights in me. And I was, but it was bright as fuck. I was like, oh. And my aunt was like, oh. And they're like, so, like, what are you guys, like, doing? And my ex was like, oh, me and her were just picking her on up from the bar. We're on our way home. And then, but, and then he asked me and my ex if he had anything to drink. And I said, no, obviously, because I didn't want to get, like, to jail or get ticketed. I was like, yeah, you want to hit? <laughs> so then, but then he had my ex step out of the car. And they were talking for a really long time. And I was so nervous. And then, like, five, ten minutes go by later. And then he comes back in. And the officer drives away, but he pulls up in front of us. And he's like, he sits down and he's looking straight. I'm looking at him, but he won't look at me. And he goes, he goes, Bianca, I know you're not going to like this, but you're going to have to drive. And I'm like, what? And he's like, my license is expired. And so, and he grabbed your license and he knows that yours aren't expired. And you told him that you weren't drinking. 
so you you ha he won't let us go until you get into the driver's seat. And I was like, you're fucking lying. That's like best case scenario though. That could have gone so much worse. So I hopped in, and I almost got us into a ditch because I thought it was the turn. I thought it was a driveway, but it wasn't a driveway. <laughs> it was oh a God. ditch. I was going like 20 the whole time. I like sat Wait, by a highway. It was like a back road. Oh, okay. I was doing 20 the whole time. I it was like a it, it was it was literally a three minute drive from where we were to my aunt's house. Oh yeah. But it <laughs> in my head, I thought it lasted forever. But I was so fuck like I could not I could not walk a straight line. I could not tell you to count to ten. Like I couldn't do that. So like my heart's pounding, like my aunt in the back's like, you're doing good, you're doing good. My ex was like, like I would be like, I thought I was going straight, but I was turning and he would grab the wheel and straighten me out. Like it was fucking bad, but, and I don't know, that was really scary. I was so scared that oh, like, I, I bet. Yeah. I'm like, sure. why, why? I should have told him that I was drunk. I should have, but no. it's fine. Well, how could she have gotten in trouble? Like if. She like, I don't know, because I was, like, underage drinking. I wasn't with the family. Like, I wasn't with my dad. Like, you have to be with the parent. Oh. It can't be, like, a yeah a family member. It has to be, like, a mom or dad. Oh, okay. And it, I wasn't. So I was scared that I was scared that I was going to go to jail for, like, underage drinking. I, right. Like, I, I don't know. But, yeah, I had to drive home, and I was just, I was, like, a huge drunk mess. It was so bad. And I will never do that ever again. So if I'm drinking somewhere, like, I'm staying there. Yeah. Or I'm making Josiah not drink at all, and then he drives me home. Doesn't need to drive. In case y'all are tuning in, welcome to the, the, the drunk the drunk cast. Oh, yeah, the drunk the drunk cast. The, 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 the drunk pod. Yeah, the drunk pod. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to change gears just a little bit. What's up, Dylan? Damn, I'm so at you're yogurt. eating yogurt now? What is it? The milk? The milk pus? Milky pus? I wish that was my asshole you put, right now. Did, you better not have put the rest of the cheesecake in there because that's what I was going to have. Too. It looks expired. It looks chunky. Why is your yogurt chunky? Well, he put cheesecake mix in How there. How well can you see that from this far? I can see the little bits on top. It looks chunky. Are you eating expired yogurt? No, I just bought that because I'm, I'm... Did you scan it? Huh? Hey, uh, you, you should come into no. the mic. You should come in the mic and do that. No, because some like, ASMR. it's easy to put cheesecake mix in there, and it's like a dessert, a low-cal dessert. Start that shit, baby. That sounded like this morning. That, that's what bad pussy sounds like. Uh, bad? <laughs> what? <laughs> if it sounds like you're making mac and cheese, then you're doing something no, that, right. That's, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Not <gasps> I over. thought you meant... Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've heard that. That's why... I, never mind. Where are you going? Oh, that's right. Guys, we have a special guest. A different kind of rat today. <laughs> what does that mean? We got one rat here. We got one rat there. Oh, gosh. <gasps> oh, I wish you could see the TV right now. This is perfect. R rat Stafarian, right? Yeah. My little wonderful. This will forever be the best guest we'll, I will ever have on this podcast. There's no, there's no talking to it. Did she mess Rest up the camera? Rest of was pretty clever. Yeah, I think so. Did you mess up the camera? Liz What's Liz. your craziest acid story? <laughs> well, I think her, her story is she was going to be snake food, but oh. Dylan fell in love with her, and then I fell in love with her. You know, you name them, and we save you from being snake food. And you're such a wonderful, nice little one. Everyone should get a rat. Everyone should save rats. And oh, oh, yeah, what happened to the camera? <laughs> <laughs> rats, <laughs> no, it's okay. Wait, oh, I, I think... Didn't, we didn't, I didn't touch it or anything. No, I think... Oh, I don't know. I wiped it last time and it fixed it. So oh, look. We're back on. It's fine. Wait, is it good now? It looks good, yeah. Oh, it's like an autofocus. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Rats this welcome. Keep on. Oh. Rats welcome. Keep. Child must be kept on a leash. Definitely. I, I saw this video of a guy walking his, like, Komodo dragon on a leash in the street. I'm like, that's fucking awesome. That is dope. 
I don't know why you would do that, but I love that. We should name this podcast the Three Musta Queers. <laughs> yeah. That's actually awesome. That they sent me. No. The what? The pictures of the puppy that the people on Facebook sent me. Was it a Hi. cute one? Are you gonna get one? We can't right now. By the way, they, they can't hear you, so. At least I don't think they can. I'm going to, I'm going to, you wanna hold that stuff are you? Sure. I'm raising her up to be my, my snake's food. No! <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just joking. I <laughs> <Inky> joking. <laughs> Uh, all right, my next question is, I only have two left, but I'm glad we, we've actually been able to make conversations about this for so long, because I wasn't Honestly. sure how long it was going to last. Yeah, for sure. What is something you guys want to do before you die? Like, what's, what's your number one thing on your bucket list? Hmm. That's a tough one. That's a good question. Because, like, I mean, I have a lot of stuff on my bucket yeah, list. You I have know? a lot of stuff that I want to I wanna do before I die. You can't say that unless you're going to be on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you chunky yogurt man. <laughs> chunky milky yogurt man. Wait, cheesecake Wait, why is, what color? Why is it like brown? The chocolate. Oh, I was about to say. I was like, what do I want to do before I die? To be fair, I don't have an answer for this yet either. I Honestly, just, all I really want out of life is like to just be successful, to like... No you regrets. Know, no regrets. Do you know? Do stuff that makes me happy. How make memories with friends. I guess if there's like a specific thing, like I would love to go to Germany. I want to go to Germany. Actually, I want to live there, but I don't know how much that's kind of far fetched to be honest. But why Germany? It's it's my home. It's like my ancestry. Oh, okay. Like eighty eighty nine percent like German. My my papa. He he moved from German Germany to Holding Ford in like eighteen something nineteen something. So like my my pop was like a hundred percent German, and he like growing up like he like gave me the German name Bianca. That's it's German. Mhm. I didn't know that. I know a lot of people think it's Hispanic. It's not. Oh, he see, took it from I, the Germans. I thought like. That girl right away when I heard Bianca. <laughs> it's originated from Germany, but it's okay. it's uh, pronounced differently in German Germany than it is in the United States. Like my last name is Benkowski, but um, how the Germans pronounce it is Benkowski, with like a F sound instead of a W, because the W in German is like a F sound. But the you, people in the United States like didn't that it like the translation wasn't correct so then they just changed it to Benkowski so my papa like taught me like we have a very strict like German household like my grandparents are like really like Christian Catholic they have very strict and um I don't know my, my papa like taught me German throughout like the years and I was learning German from that household and then English and school and stuff my dad speaks it my papa speaks it I speak it so I would and then I took German class throughout like middle school to high school because it was super easy because easy a I knew I already knew it Mm yeah so it was fun and just to like I feel like that when you go someplace else than where you're, what you're usually like comfortable with, then you get to learn more about that culture and you learn about your own culture too. Cause yeah, yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So yep. I feel like going to either living there or just visiting for vacation, I feel like it would not only let, allow myself to like get to know what their culture is like, but also to like understand like my culture as well. Because I didn't grow up in Germany. I grew up in a german household but not like you know what i mean i've also heard that like germany is beautiful too oh my god it's so pretty it's so pretty i want to go to oktoberfest it's actually funny they have oktoberfest but it's in november Mm -hmm. yeah it's so crazy i'm like okay that is cool yeah yeah Yeah, people there just they're on like a whole different like level they don't give a fuck no and they really don't like their culture is just like you know like be you be true have fun 
don't do no wrong like they don't they don't understand we don't understand how like better it is that not in the united states yeah the food's probably better there too the food's probably yeah the food's and definitely better yeah good for you actually like not so dies and shit Have y'all seen, like, pictures of, like, Switzerland? Oh, my God. That place looks unreal. Yeah. It really does. It, it looks like something straight out of, like, a, a fantasy video game or something. So, yeah. I feel like if before I die, I would like to go to Germany or live there. I don't know. You should do it. Everything I want to do, I already do. You know what I mean? I don't know. Well, I can't relate, but that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I don't know. Like, well, I don't while your life is so awful... <laughs> like I want to swim with sharks, I want to do that. Okay, that's a good one. I want to do that. Like be like in a cage. I want to like. I feel like sharks are just like really misunderstood <laughs> creatures, and like they don't mean they don't. They're not violent unless they feel threatened. Or you know. Or smell blood. They're so cute. They're so cute. Yeah. So okay. There. Before I die, I would like to swim with sharks. Have you ever seen a goblin shark? No. I'm more obsessed with, like, the great white sharks. They're just so pretty. I don't know. It's so... There's just so something about them. Like, I see this girl, she, like, scuba dives for, like, biology. Oh, God. Okay, well, maybe that one is actually a misunderstanding. He looks like the glizzy gobbler of sharks. That's a shark, apparently. She goes, she this, she's, like, a marine biologist, and she scuba dives in the ocean, and she sees, like, all of these, like, hooks that are just attached to the sharks and she Aww. just she That's just it. they like rub up against her and like just like how a cat would and she would just reach into their mouth and take the hook out and leave her alone yeah, like they, they don't, don't do that. that you know what i mean i find it like i understand how like a lot of like deaths or accidents happen from like shark related but like come on and there's like a hundreds of these sharks surrounding her and not one of them is like being like threatened or feel threatened they they know that she's there to help them because she just takes the hooks and like put it in like a like a little like fanny pack of hers and then they just swim away they'll, and they'll like nudge her like thanks and then they'll go and then the next person and, and, and the next shark and people think people or uh, people think that people die a lot from sharks but there's like less than a hundred a year yeah, yeah. it's, it's not gonna say it's it's, it's so it's, it's so, so low and mm -hmm. you go yeah, into their the habitat the beaches yeah there. you're i think like you're only gonna get a bad result with sharks if you're doing something bad like if you're like if the vibes off yeah, yeah. the vibes <laughs> off with a shark then you're shark food but if you have the right vibes with them then they'll fuck with you so i want to yeah i want to swim with sharks before I die. Well, you should definitely need to do it now. I'm gonna. I don't know when, but I'm gonna. Like, I'm not really much of, like, a skydiving kind of person. I wouldn't do that. I, I... That, yeah, like, it sounds like it could be fun, but that just sounds like it'd make me, like, sick. I feel like psychologically, the people who don't want to do it need it the most because the people who don't want to do it, when they do it, they'll, like, appreciate their life more because of that experience. Because there's, a, like... Like there's, a, like, there's a thought in your head, like, oh, what if something bad happens? What if I die? What if the parachute won't open? What if, you know, whatever. And, like, you're fucking falling from thousand miles up in the air. Yeah, like, 10,000 feet or something. Literally. Like that. And so, like, people, and then, like, like, so, I don't know. I feel like I should do it because I don't want to do it, so then I'd appreciate my life more. I'll but go with you. Oh god! I just want to do it so a, a big man can straddle Strat me. Straddle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh! Yeah, literally, they're like, yeah, I want to be straddled. I want to straddle some guy up next <laughs> behind me. Like, you're saving my life, and you're behind me. I feel so vulnerable. I feel like right that now. I would just be scared, and there, and the guy's like, w w "What's to be afraid? Like, why are you scared?" I'm like, "That you'll get hard." <laughs> hey, why is your finger in my ass? What? <laughs> Something. Like, I don't know. I'm not. I'm so scared, but I know that I should probably do it because. It's better, but I don't know. Everything that I've, like I said, everything I've ever wanted to do or achieve, like, I'm either working on it or I already, like, I got there. Okay, okay. What about you? Well, I definitely want to go skydiving. That's something I want to do in the next few years. Yeah. Dylan wants to go, too. It's actually really expensive. Josiah wants to go. Sense. Yeah, it's like $200 a person. Oh, that's way cheaper than I thought it yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to go tandem, yeah. So that sounds fun, and I I would like to go, you know, to Italy or something like that. Or Italy, oh my God, I would yeah. love to see Italy. Where you know, art was, 
Art wasn't born there, but you know. Exactly. That's why they made Fawawis. <laughs> I <laughs> love Fawawis. Da Vinci is from there and everything, and you know, the Renaissance era. Oh, I'd love to be see that history, the Colosseum. Are, are you going there. to the Ren Fair this year? I want to go because I have never been. What? Oh, oh you got to go. Oh. I've never been either, and I've always wanted yeah. to go. I literally had free tickets like for the last oh, three years, really? and I ended up not going. Let's, yeah, let's, just, just fucking go. Out. It's next month. <laughs> I, I love it. It's so much fun. You, yeah, you do. Yeah. You just dress up like a, a fairy or like a knight. I want to be a mushroom fairy. Oh do my it. God, yes. And people there, they like. They're like actors, right? But they, they talk They're like in character the whole time. Like, you pull out your phone, they're like, oh, what is this magical device? Oh, yeah, they fucking roast you, too. Yeah. And it's, like, it's, it's so funny. Like, if you come in normal clothes? It, no, no matter what. Some of them oh. will just roast you for, like, no reason. And it's it's so funny. But they're doing it in, like, old, in character. old time speak. <laughs> Uh, what about yeah? What about you? What do you want to do before you die? That's kind of lame. I don't really have like anything like crazy planned, but um, I make music and I just want to play on a stage in front of people. At that's least, not that's at, not at lame once. though. That's like a dream. That's what you want. I know, I just but it's like that. I don't know. It's like eventually, like if you get to that level, you're going to be doing it all the time. But I just want to do it at least once. You say yeah. it. Just as yeah, just to get it off your bucket list. Why don't you go to the Skyway and because I know like. <clears throat> they have people perform before like the other oh you know the main people like opening open. yeah like i'll be yeah. thinking about it I, st- I still have to learn how to actually like dj like producing music is one thing but djing is completely yeah, it's different. different it's it's right. not like it's hard but I, I complicated just, it's i still haven't figured it out yet I, i'm very new to it but soon yeah. You set goals, that's what you do, that's what humans do, make, like, otherwise, like, what's the point of life? You, like, you can't just keep work doing the same routine over and over. Like, it's good to have goals. Yeah, So you can sure. work towards them. Absolutely. I that's love that. I, I mean, other than that, I don't know. I think that's just it for now. I'll, I'll worry about the rest when it, you know, happens. Yeah. Yeah, and I as get you it. get older, you know, you got more goals that you want to achieve because you're in a different decade of your life, and more stuff you want to get off that bucket list i definitely one thing i do want to achieve in life is have a in unit laundry room in my apartment i'm so sick and tired of going outside or going to a laundromat or going to a friend's house or my mom's house to do freaking laundry i want to have a nice house with a fucking laundry room so i can just do it it's so like today just to do laundry we had to go to the bank and then oh the bank closed early today which we should have known then we had we went over to the laundromat to get quarters and then we went over to my apartment to do the laundry but before summers happened um my washer and dryer didn't work because the pipes were frozen so like i had to like either do laundry at like your guys's house or i had to like drive all the way to my mom which is like a 40 minute drive just to do like one load of laundry yeah it's annoying it's, it's the most annoying chore i hate i hate i miss i love doing it if i have it in my unit yeah i like, guess i've been spoiled because I, I always grew up with it but my dryer's been broke for way too damn long and hanging up your clothes like oh old no school style, that's, that's what my grandma does oh yeah. it's, it's actually better for, for your clothes but it's just it sucks and it just takes like 20 or 30 minutes where you can just like put it in the dryer but no right all right final question because i think we're like i don't know how far we're in like an hour and a half probably perfect which is like perfect timing. please tell me that this will be on spotify i i don't know how to put it on spotify yet i think i have to pay money for that really i don't know i I will look into it maybe can you do it on soundcloud for free oh probably probably I promote cool. it. I need something to put in my link tree on my Instagram. Follow yeah. me on uh, follow me on Instagram at Hey, we don't do free plugs here. I'm just at uh, <laughs> Bianca dot B three three three. Um, yeah, follow me on Instagram. I have my link tree in the bio. Check out my Visco and my music. Do it. This is what you do at the end of a podcast. Okay. I'm just putting it out there. Description down below. And it, now I know why you came. You just, I don't want to get a free plug. Free clout. Well, for all ten people who are gonna watch. For all ten people, make sure you follow me. I wasn't even following you. What the hell? <laughs> well, look at that. You gotta follow. Her. 
Yeah. You you, you gotta, gotta follow me too. Okay. okay. I, I got two you, followers. I will not remember that unless you send me it. I will send you the link. <laughs> Summer photo dump, sexy. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, as soon as I can figure out how to put it on something other than YouTube, I will let y'all know because I want to do that too. I mean, if you can figure it out, I know a lot of people who do like podcasts like these. I'm pretty sure we can figure out a way to do it that's not gonna cost a whole lot of money. Uh, I don't know. I, I want to do it though because I. Some people just want to listen. They don't want to watch. So. Yeah, no. Yeah. I listen to podcasts that they have the video of it, and they have it on, like, SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. And so I love e- doing either or. I love seeing their faces, though. I prefer, like, if I'm doing something, like, working, I'll listen to it. But then if I get home, I'm like, I really want to see, like, their face. Right. It's more, like, interactive. And you feel, yeah. like, more of a part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll, <clears throat> we'll figure out. If there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. We'll figure it out. So my final question here is, what do you think is most important in maintaining a French, a friendship slash relationship? Communication, yeah. definite communication. Um, well, so what about things that people don't really talk about a lot? Because I know everyone says communication well, is like, obviously important. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, like how I said earlier, like boundaries, communicating. I don't know. Like, I have definitely been that friend a lot that like always hit up the other friend and like Mm -hmm. made plans and like over the years i kind of got really sick of doing that because it would always be me the one initiating everything and then so then i would stop like if you want to see me like you'll message me and then i won't get those messages and like months will go by and like they'll hit me up and be like oh well like why haven't you texted me why haven't we hung out and i'm like i don't want to initiate everything like so i did then so and i i I have that with my friends too like we're we're so close we've been friends for like seven years but they're also autistic and i think that might also be a part of it where they're just like i i I just i don't know i just don't think about it which i guess makes sense because i am too so maybe it could be like that but that's also like put in a little bit of effort you know right i feel like bottoms (laughs) literally (laughs) subbies subbies like i feel like like i said like but they commute but that what i just said it all goes with communication as well because like if i don't communicate that with that said friend then how are they supposed to know like what where my end is coming from mm-hmm. you know what i mean so like honestly whatever probably like, the best like thing for a friendship relationship whatever is just communicating like if i have a problem with somebody i'm not going to go to this other person and tell them my <laughs> problem that's not going to fix it yeah. i'm going to go directly to that person i'm having a problem with and like figuring it out and that's just being mature about it too like it it just why would you not do that like obviously sometimes we're gonna have uncomfortable conversations but that's just life like that's if you can't have that well then like you know exactly it's like it's if you need to have like the tough talks that's how you grow and that's how you bond yeah yeah and like like me and brookie like we have total different like schedules and so like sometimes like i'll hit her up and she, oh i'm at work and then she'll hit me up oh i'm at work and we'll have like a really like kind of like a struggle with trying to find a day and time where we can hang out and where we can just be like around just like each other um but like like that's how that's all part of communicating you know like i'm not gonna be like oh she doesn't want to hang out with me because because she, she just doesn't want to hang out with me no she doesn't want she can't hang out with me because she's at work and that's just adulthood too like yeah. hanging yeah. out with your friends is so much harder as you get older it i is. know it's and it sucks because like i mean for me too being a tattoo artist like i'm tattooing like if i'm not at work like i could be dr- having to draw or just get stuff done around the house and it sucks so yeah i it's something like that you need to have a balance with for sure in this kind of industry because I mean, relationships, like, are one of the most important things to me, and it's what keeps me sane, you know, being with friends, and I wish I could see my friends more. Me too. And I, I'm i also really bad at reaching out. Like, I, you already know, I hardly text you at all, and it's not like I don't give a fuck. It's just, sometimes I just, I don't know, I don't want to talk to anyone, and it's, like, nothing personal, but I... Yeah, and I, I get that. I gotta get, I gotta get better at that, because it's, like... Oh, do you have, do you not understand how many like red messages that I have of people that that they've texted me and I just like left them on red? I'm like, and then I forget that I left yeah. them on red and I'm like, oh shoot, I, I forgot that about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do it to my good friends too, and I feel and I feel bad. It's like it's like I don't hate you. I'm just my brain is weird. I don't know how to like explain it, but 
Yeah, being an introvert sucks. Like, I'm an introvert, but I crave that friendship and stuff. But I've had trauma, though, from friendships in the past. You know, I think everyone does where, like, get reject, you know, rejected and time after time again. It's like you don't want to do any, you don't want to reach out. And then, like, mental illness. Yeah. Or just kind of feeling depressed and, like, you just want to be to yourself. And that sucks, too. And, you know, I luckily I have the, my, my good friends, like, understand that and they're there for me for that. But I've also had people in the past who are just like, yo, why don't you hit me up anymore? What's going on? And it's like, well, then I tell them, and they're like, well, that's all an excuse. You shouldn't, you know, this and that, this and that. It's like, well, that's pretty selfish, per- first of all, but you should be trying to be more accepting. Right. But, yeah, it's a it's a slippery thing. Like, I'm on Bumble with the friendship, because I think there you can do, like, date, friendship, or hook up or whatever mm-hmm. so i'm on the i'm on the friend one because i don't really have a whole lot of friends and like i have a really hard time making friends because again with like friend like trauma i always like put up like this really big wall when it comes to meeting new people especially females because yep, i feel that you know yeah, we, we bonded, bonded over, over that, that. Yeah. that's i'm like brooke is probably the only friend that i have that i have <coughs> i never hated you like from the beginning oh. like at least like everybody who's in my small circle <laughs> I've always just hated in the beginning. I'm like, I don't like you. And then I grew to love them because it is a me problem and it's something that I've been working on for a long time. So, like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. That we, I, we clicked right. instantly. So I met this girl on Bumble and I'm not going to name drop. And we clicked so, like, instantly. And I, like, just getting to know her and texting her, but, like, when I try to make plans with her, she always is like, oh, like, I'm really scared. I I don't want to, like, I get so tired. I get so depressed. I don't want to talk to people. And, like, I understand that. And I, like, I'll, like, hit her up. I'm like, hey, do you want to hang out? Like, what does your, like, sh- days look like? And I understand that she's having some, like, problems, like, at work. But at this point, like, I've been, we've been texting each other back and forth since, like, before summer started and it's coming to be like late june or sorry july late july (laughs) and i just kind of want to give up because i feel like if we're not going to hang out and we're just going to be texting friends yeah Yeah. you can't really build a friendship off of that i hate like texting or video chat i'd rather see the person see the person in person person. i have like tried like like i'm like we can like try to ease her anxiety like oh do you want to go to like on like an uh, open area, you know, where it's not like just me and you in like in a room, like yeah. you know, in public. You want to go meet up in public, or like maybe like do you want to call me? Or we could like FaceTime. Maybe that'll like ease your anxiety. Like I'm not an axe murderer, but she right. doesn't know that. But right. also, like I understand where her anxieties is, but like for me, and this is a story for a different time. But like during my Tinder whole phase, like I would go into anybody's car when they just picked me up, and I didn't know anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, don't do that. I would go into <laughs> anybody's car. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm gonna pick you up. Okay, here's my address. All right, get into their car. So like, I understand where. Her, like, I'm trying to see from her point of view when I'm not like that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And and I feel that too because like I don't really get along with a lot of guys that much. Like there are a couple. I do like some of my best friends but like I mostly get along with women and you know as a man trying to be like hey you want to hang out and do this I understand where their fear is coming from it's like oh well, this guy could rape me or murder me or do something like that and, and it's like I, I get it but it's like fuck you know I hate you don't have I, the murder vibe though well if you text me and was like hey Bianca do you want to hang out I'd be like where are we going where are we at we're we going and I agree. I, I'm, I'm a little softy, okay? But, like, I understand where some people are just like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. So, yeah. it's, like, I, yeah, it yeah. sucks. But after trying for so long, like, trying to, like, meet up with her, try to have, like, try to, like, actually have a friendship that, like, she's putting in, like, the same effort as I am. Like, oh, we'll text each other. We'll catch each other up on our week. She asks me about, like, my plans and <coughs> stuff. So, like just seems like a normal friendship but she just something about it she just refuses to do you think it's just you or does she you think she does it with everyone i think that she does with everyone i think so i don't think it's just like 
platonically just me. Do you think she, like, maybe is, like, agoraphobic and doesn't like going out in public? Because my brother has that and he never leaves the house. No, because, so, when I, like, she mentioned, like, going out in public first, like, in the beginning of our, like, friendship. Oh, okay. And then I brought it up again, like, towards, like, like, like last week. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I feel like that she's just, like, really stressed and really depressed and I'm, like, I'm trying to understand and like I'm trying to be empathetic you know and I'm like I get it I get like that sometimes too when I worked at Duncan for hours on end I would just want to go home and just sleep right. so but depressed but also like can we progress this yeah but, like, but like, can I still like can we still hang out it would probably make her feel better you never she might be right like out, if you just see me once and you understand how awesome of a person I am then you'll like want to see me more and yeah. it won't be as scary have you tried being more direct and like forward about it like no hey, let's so I mean I I like how our friendship is going but I want it to go further can we please like plan something yeah, yeah I mean I feel like I should but like also like come on communication that's I know <laughs> miscommunication over here I want to but like I don't want to come off as being like a douche about it because right. I, I I understand her anxiety like I get it about meeting somebody like for the first time and like getting that friendship but like with me like i'm such like a bubbly like outgoing person if i get that vibe from that other person if i don't then i'll just stay to myself and like be quiet and, you know and it's like you can't let that hold you back too you know it's like yeah. anxiety I'm sucks like, and i struggle yeah, with it too dude. but you can't if you just let it like eat away at you like that you consume you yeah, yeah. It's just so I, and i really feel and I, I just feel bad for her in a way because like you said like that's just no way to live like, if you're on, and she's on the app as well, she's still active, so she's actively looking for friends, but not hanging out with them. Yeah. So I just, I don't know, I just, like I said, I, I, I got, I'm just getting really sick and tired of just, like, initiating to hang out with people, and it's not just her, it's with, like, you know, people in my family as well, mm-hmm. other friends, so I just stopped hitting them up, and, like, if you miss me, if you want to hang out with me, you text me, because I'm... I swear I'm getting rid of my iPhone and going to a flip phone because my phone is so dry. I <laughs> wish I could do that. I hate my phone. God, that reminds me of a date I went on recently with this girl who was like, she matched with me on like Facebook dating. We were like talking sexually and all these kinds of things. We were flirting, getting to know each other. I'm going to put then, my finger in your belly <laughs> button. Yeah. <laughs> Blocked. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, and then we like, we Report. hung, and we hung <laughs> out and she told me like, the, you're the first person I've ever hung out with in like a very long time. And then, but she's also like, I don't want you to touch me or kiss me or eat that. I'm very nervous. And it's like, mm, it's not like that in the text messages. And so. Uh, it's I, easier to I do re- it behind a screen. Yeah. And, and I respected that. I was like, I'm not going to force anything, obviously. Uh, we were in a movie. I was like, can I at least like put my arm around you? She's like, no. no. And and then she had the audacity to be like, like, do you, do you still like me? I'm like, I yeah i can only be so understanding though know? like come on you know i need yeah i need something something yeah, like yeah especially after all that talk like right it's like the, the communication thing like well right. that sounds like because i used to be that way and, and well, well, she it told was me, scary well, she told me first she's like if i can't let you kiss me because if i if you do i i know like i won't be able to control myself i'm like honey that's a that's something i can't help you with i'm sorry <laughs> like that's that's on you, so. Well, good thing you didn't kiss her, because she wouldn't, you couldn't control that, apparently. Yeah, well, I also don't, that's another thing, like, I, I made a post about this the other day, too, where I feel like I've, I've made, like, women uncomfortable making the first move, because I guess I didn't read the okay. situation. I saw that post, yeah. and I was going to comment. Please, let's, let be honest, I want to hear about this. Okay. I'm not a horrible person. No, you're not. Okay. I don't think you are. <laughs> I was going to comment, but the, the comment got way too long. And I just deleted it. Oh, that's whack. <laughs> it got way too long, and I was like, it was longer than the post that you made. It was, like, 300 characters. Well, I know. Tell me. I want to know. But I don't, from a female's perspective, I don't think that it's necessarily the guys doing to make the first move. And I hate how Thank society you. makes it. Because, like, women from over the ages have done so much not even for like ourselves but for like laws and 
schooling and I just I don't think that it always has to necessarily be the guy's like initiative to take the first to make the first move I don't I think girls if you were you know if you have a pair and you're a girl fucking do it you know what I mean exactly and some of them um, they like went with it like they acted like they were into it and then later told me that they weren't and they were like uncomfortable it's like you could have said something right like, right and i think that it's it's those kind of people that like like it's just like getting your hair done or getting your nails done if if you don't say something during the process and you don't like how your nails are but you don't say something that's on you that's on you yeah, you're gonna regret it. no matter what kind of situation you're in whether it's like I said, hair, nails, or sexual based, or what any kind of position that you're in, if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't feel safe, fucking say something. Right. Because that's not fair to not only yourself, but to the other person. Yeah, exactly. It's not. Like, I couldn't imagine being with somebody sexually and then me being uncomfortable and then just not saying anything and then, or not like, hearing my like having a voice for myself standing up for myself and then just allowing it to happen anyways yeah. i can't do that that's so unfair to both sides because now i feel like i it's not fair to me because i allowed that to happen and now i'm traumatized but now this dude or whoever is is doing the thing not knowing that i'm uncomfortable and he thinks it's okay and then i message him like later and been like i wasn't comfortable with that yeah now you made him feel shitty right why didn't you tell shitty. him the, the, that time and not only that i have social anxiety and i'm awkward as fuck so the fact that i'm already putting myself out there is ballsy enough and you're gonna have the audacity to be like exactly i feel like that if you have a voice you have a voice you can stand up for yourself like you, you say something like I've been in so many predicaments sexual wise and non-sexual wise where I was in a very uncomfortable position and I didn't know like I, I had to say something otherwise it could have gone so like south you know so like everybody has a voice you can you you can tell somebody if you're uncomfortable and get yourself out of that position we're we all have a voice we all know what the feeling is of being uncomfortable and just fucking say something although i on the flip side of that though i feel like there are some situations where women are like terrified like which where, is where fine. it's like really bad and they don't want to say something like a fear of like something else horrible like get killed or hit yeah or and so like to that i i understand that with reason i don't know i don't know i know i know i can see what you both are getting at it's like if you're going to get yourself into that situation, you might as well take care of your mental health and the other person's mental health. Exactly. Just be honest with them. Right. And just maybe talk about it. I mean, just maybe, like, in this particular situation, like, if this girl was uncomfortable, but she didn't say anything to you, and she just kept going with it, like, she didn't give you any cues to know that she was uncomfortable. And she, yeah, like, so there was a point where she, like, got on my lap and straddled me and all this stuff, and now and, like, you're going to say I made you uncomfortable? Like... Right. It's what in the fuck is going on? He <laughs> didn't seem uncomfortable when you were sitting on my peen. Yeah, but, exactly. All right. It's like, exactly. well, I, it's like you shouldn't have pushed that on the first date. I'm like, oh, uh, my right. be. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I'm just so desirable. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's charming well, over here. Another thing I want to say, though, is back with, like, relationships and everything. It At the end of the day, I feel like it all starts inside of you, like, if how you feel about yourself is probably going to project onto other people or oh. what you do or what you don't do so 100%. if you don't like yourself just take you need to take steps on how to feel better about yourself cuz it's only going to you're only going to push put you know push it outwards like feel more confident about yourself and like i think after that everything will follow, follow through mm -hmm. you know take care of yourself and take care of your mental health and you know everything is going to be in in its place sooner or later when, when that happens and like obviously everyone gonna like hate certain parts of themselves everyone's gonna find flaws which is you know it's fine it's normal but uh, like I, i've met people who always talk down on themselves and like make them feel like oh i'm horrible i'm worthless i'm ugly it's like 
that it's hard to be friends with someone like that or even a relationship when they're so down yeah. about themselves that they make other people around them feel down as well that is just an unstable person and it's so hard to be around people like that because yeah. it just they just bring like the whole energy the whole vibe just <clears throat> down like you know everybody can be in a bad mood sometimes like i'm not saying that it's not valid because you can definitely be like upset whatever just don't portray it onto other people don't just because you're so miserable don't doesn't mean that you have to make people around you miserable right exactly like i hit my double chin but like i don't i'm not gonna be like oh <laughs> fuck i hate my goddamn double chin this shit is nobody awful. wants me yeah, no. and yeah. but, but that is the flip side of where people are just so cocky oh my and god full of themselves. honestly like i was just scrolling through instagram and uh, I, I found my old Instagram that I had a spam account that I've had since like 2018 and I haven't been logged into it in forever and I so forgot about it and I was just looking through these fucking posts and like every 10 posts I've seen at least like five or six of them was me being like I'm so ugly oh my god I wish I was more like that and I see myself now and I'm like why did I ever do that like you yeah. sound so fucking stupid character like, development you know what yeah. i mean i'm like dude <laughs> if only i could just sit myself like in my 2018 self down i've been like listen babe you're okay you're hot calm down like, <laughs> why i don't know i i'm i really i want to punch myself and it was so it was like every i was like oh that's a cute picture oh that's a cute picture and then it's just me crying and i'm so ugly shut up Shut up! Right. God, I want to slap myself so bad. Oh my God, yeah. I, I, I want to ask y'all both something. I, both the females in this room, because both I, females. Yeah, yeah, gif, 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 the rest of the is a female too. Yeah, I have to ask the, the question too. The, the trace, the, the the whole the the musket queers. The, the three musket queers. Yes, <laughs> that's us. Um, so, I got to a point where I made this meme and I was sending it to him to, as like a a pickup line mm -hmm. and i sent it to a lot of women and apparently i sent it to one girl who knew another girl and like you sent this to my friend which okay fair i can understand why that'd be upsetting but like do who you cares? want me to come up with a specific pickup line for every single fucking girl i talk to is is that i don't know what's like, the question like i don't i was just sending it to a bunch of women and i was like it was clever it was funny some people liked it but what is it? It was like, can I can I send you a corny pickup line? And it was a bunch of corn and, and <laughs> inside of like the back of like of some pickup trucks. And and, and I, I don't know. The, the, my question is, is like, why? Does it really matter? Like, you want me to make something very specific towards you? Just for you, you specifically. Like, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I I'm, I'm gonna get to know you and stuff, but it's like. Wait, so is that I, got, I got outed on this like and somebody like made a whole post about it like this so man. are you asking us is is it okay to send the same pickup line to every female yes is it is, or is that a fact i think that's fine i think it's fine i don't see any harm you're not murdering anybody right it's like that female that got upset because you sent that to her friend and her like just got in her feels and just got real like ooh like too fucking like that's that's not it you know what i mean right like when i was in my tinder tinder whole phase i sent the same thing to every dude i was trying to get into my dms right. like it is, it is, well, i copied and pasted <clears throat> that shit because what so who cares to, like, no think this, this is whole just the up. start of the relationship right? exactly right. It is be, it's like, well, so I no i think that it's fine yeah, there's a billion quadrillion women out there in this world and you're not gonna come up with that many pickup lines exactly yeah. and the, you know sometimes there'll be like a quality about them that stands out that i'll, I'll like mention i'll be compliment mm -hmm. on it but it's like y'all asking fine. too much of yeah it. no <laughs> i think that female got like way too butthurt over it and it wasn't valid and well, she didn't deserve me anyways, how are you so. supposed to know yeah. it was like they were friends no no so she really was like Ugh. You sent this to my friend, so I'm mad at you. The fact that she figured that out is already like, yeah. Well, I'm I mean, so I don't know. Confused. I know you wouldn't communicate with between each other. Him. Yeah, she's sleuthing. She she just got really butt hurt for no reason. She got herself upset over s spilled milk. I think it's because so she, she was breaking up with her girlfriend at the time, so 
She's probably a salty mindset. Very salty oh, yeah. mindset. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I think, yeah, no. In conclusion, I think that it's okay for a guy to send the same pickup line to whoever, whomever, whenever. You're that, fellas. Go, go ham. Yeah, especially if it's a good one. Copy and paste. Yeah, especially. And that's a good one. I, that was a good one. Oh, no. Yes, my, my, the one I've been using lately is, uh, um, I, said, I love your style, and I think you belong in a museum because you are a work of art. I was like, that's... <laughs> it's schmoove. Because the thing is, is, I don't, like, no matter how many times, like, somebody, like, okay, like, pretend it was me, and, like, I'm single, whatever, somebody sends me a, a, a pickup line, and... No, knowing in the back of my head, knowing how guys are, because that's not the first time that a guy has said that pickup line to one person. They've said it to multiple people. But the fact that they sent it to me, too, I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Like, I'm like, I don't, like, like, if like I chose you, if somebody sent me a pickup line, like, if it was, like, some random dude i'm not thinking oh how many girls have you sent that to i'm thinking oh you sent it to me that's so nice like who i wouldn't care right and you have a chance to reply better than they did and exactly so So, i don't know i think brooke is on the same page as i am oh yeah no i totally agree and it's like i mean someone can look at it two ways they can think of the negatives or they can think of the positives like what bianca was saying like well, I mean, he sent it to you, so you must think you are right, cute right. and special. Yeah. So you have to think about it in the positive way, like, you know. And How I, did Dylan hit you up? I'm, I'm curious. No, nah, well, I think I hit him up first because oh, we okay. were... See, women taking initiative. Start, like, doing it first. We love that. Yeah, and I'm a switch, so hey, you know what? Shoot your shot. <laughs> oh. You shoot your shot with <laughs> Mr. Clumsy over here. <laughs> But yeah, me and Dylan, like, we met through his, uh, my ex, actually, they were friends, and, like, when shit started to go rocky, I, I like, needed a friend, and, you know, I've, I've, I'd seen Dylan a couple times before, and he helped, he helped, he, like, helped me through some mental stuff, and, you know, we just started talking as friends, you know, but then things escalated, and, you know, now he's my pookie bear. So, like, <laughs> so did you make the first move, or did he? I think I did. I mean, but he was the one who asked me out and stuff and everything. But yeah. you initiated, like, the text. Thing, yeah, right? initiated, like, the friendship. Cause That's how it like, starts. You know, I could have just, like, ignored him or not talked to him anymore. But, You're you like, know. hey, yo, Dylan, yeah. you want to come over and shit? <laughs> right. You know, I don't like, think she said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Yeah>. not Brooke. <laughs> and she's like, hey. Yeah. With, like, three Y's. Yeah, three Y's. Well, the thing I like smiley face with two little smiles. Yeah, I probably was texting like that too. I was kind of cringe, and I don't. Oh know no, I was. Yeah, I thought about me back in the day. Mm-hmm. When first I first <laughs> done a lot of cringe shit, but I still use XD. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't give a I just use that today. <laughs> and the the three, the the two dots and the three. Yeah, the cute little the little three. cat face. Yeah, that's yeah. so cute. Fuck. Well, this has been awesome, guys. I feel like we're kind of over our time. I don't even know how long. This that's has been. good. But. Oh, two hours. That's actually not That's too bad. That's not bad. No. This has been awesome. I, I have, This is a, the best, like, first in-person podcast I could have asked for. So. I don't think it could have gone any better. You you almost felt like you were hosting it for half the time. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, I've always wanted to be in my own podcast and have my own podcast. Okay, okay. I, All right. I, I always <laughs> wanted to, and I feel like that I have a lot of stories and I can make people laugh. I'm just real. And people these days, like, they don't really like real. They like try canceling all of like, the real people. It's so, a podcast for another day. And oh that's a God. story for another day. So, so thank sad. you so much for watching. Link tree in the description at bianca.b333 yeah, for my I'm Insta. Def- I'm definitely cutting this part At out. very poisoned. <laughs> don't cut <laughs> this <laughs> out. <laughs> yep, if you need a tattoo, hit Brooke up. Her link tree will be in the description below. Uh, August 9th or 10th? The 10th. Okay. Tattoo in his other hand. Do you, do you want to sign us off? Yep. Well, everyone, have a great yeehaw day and night. And if you enjoyed this shit, we might come back on again. Do you remember the name of my podcast? The Three Musket Queers. The Three Musket Queers. I mean, fuck, I like that, but no, this. I kind of want to do that, but. Do it! The Three Musket Queers. But I already have a podcast name. It's Meme Works. That's oh, like yeah, Meme Works. Meme works. Follow Meme Works. But you know, get this to 100. Get us 300K. I'm pretty sure if you combine all of our sexualities, we'll have one 
gay person. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like I it's mean, Steven Universe. Do we not already? Who's the gay one here? I mean, I'm gonna uh, say maybe you slightly. Also, I, I am gay. I mean, I'll swing both either way, you know. But I'm with a man right now, so. You th- you think I'm gay? I get a gay bi- vibe. You you said I was gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just fun. I'm. That's fair. Cute. That's I don't know. Perfect. Would you would you ever lick a a coochie a turtle no, tail? No, no, no. Okay, so <laughs> have I ever been with a girl? No. But am I open to it? Yes. But would I go down on her? No. Oh. But would I let her go down on me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and that's called a pillow princess. Yep. Yeah, so, you, yeah. You, ain't, you ain't getting no woman with that. Kind of <laughs> hey, there's a lot of people that are, like, more givers than receivers. And, like, that's there's some fun. girls, like, my cousin's in a relationship with a girl, and they've been together for three years, and, like, she's like, I don't want you to do anything to me because I'm the giver. And, like, my cousins wanted to. But she's like, no, like, you don't have to because I don't want that. I want to give to you. So if any girls want a pillow princess. <laughs> I do not. Uh, <laughs> if any guys want to pay me to kick them in the nuts, son, hey, come yo, my way. Sorry, only fans for that. You'll have a lot of customers. That happened at the tattoo shop. Some guy, <laughs> Clarice and Emily, well, Clarice was sitting outside and he was like, hey, would you do me a favor? She was like, what? And I was like, would you kick me in the nuts? Like, that's kind of my thing. I'll pay you. So she, like, didn't want to do it alone. So she called another coworker, and, you know, they both did it. And, he, you know, pretty pretty hard, too. He got down on his knees and, you know, spread his legs. And when they did it, he fell forward. And he was like, okay, next girl. And he's like, well. Oh, you, what? This is, did this they, actually did they get money? No, well, doing they it? did it for free. Like, he, he you know, he uh-uh. only had, like, ten bucks. Uh-huh. If I'm, I'm, kick- was, if I'm kicking you in the nuts, yeah, you're, I'm getting paid for doing that. Yeah, I wasn't there at the time, man. It sucks, because whenever I'm not there, some Something crazy, happens. Like, shit like that happens. Same. I would have done it, man, for free. Hey, you know what? I've, I've always been the dom in a relationship, but sometimes I just want a dommy mommy to step on me and call me your little cum slut, you know? Dominatrix. We all yeah. gotta go to ground zero. Yes. 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 So, I would love to. Next week? Next week? I could do next week. Friday? Saturday? Mm, I work till noon Saturday. I can come that day. Like what? The 22nd or the 29th? Not that 29th. I'm going to Wisconsin. The tw- oh, no, fuck. I'm going to a festival on the 22nd, so... Can't, it can't be that weekend after. I won't mm, be here. So, I guess three August. weeks from now? Sure. All right. August 5th will be at the ground zero. All right. Oh, Oh shit! I have a. <laughs> have you ever been? <laughs> no, but I have a graduation party to go to on the fifth. Well, what about a Friday? Don't aren't they open on Friday? Yeah, Fridays and Saturdays. So we could go. Could do there. We could do that. We could go this Friday. The twenty-first or the twenty-eighth. Okay. I mean, That's which one works for you? This week works. Yeah, best this week would work best for me too. Oh fuck! Yeah. Oh, if I wasn't going to a festival, that's the only problem, fuck, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll figure something out, though. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Anyways, everybody, thank you for listening to the Mean Works Podcast. I hope y'all have a beautiful day, and go hug your mom. Yeah, go hug, her, hug your mom. Give her a kiss for me. <laughs> oh, also, by the way, I just want to let y'all know, she threw my dead dad's jacket on the ground. Rest in peace. Be- <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, y'all. <laughs> More like rest in fleece. <laughs> You're done. <laughs>